one of the greatest footballers. Steven Gerrard! Aguero! That's magical! Ronaldo! Jack Greenish! Greenish! A magic little man produced a sensational goal. An absolute beauty! Ben Watson has put Wigan in front. Good afternoon and welcome to Wrexham, ahead of a very exciting fourth round FA Cup tie with a script fit for Hollywood. In a world where great risks can bring extraordinary rewards, two men bought a football club in a town they've never heard of before. Welcome to Wrexham. Yes, really. What the f are these two guys doing here? A town of followers on a journey to rediscover their past. Reigniting the fire of the Wrexham Dragon. It's an underdog story. Are you gonna come to the game on Saturday? A story of love, passion, and faith. Cue the montage. Who are ya? Who are ya? The pursuit for FA Cup glory. This time, it's personal. Coming to a screen near you. Yes, it's been quite a ride for these fans of late, and there is huge excitement in North Wales ahead of a classic cup tie between two teams in great form. The lowest ranked side left in the draw, Wrexham, top of the National League, taking on Sheffield United, second in the Championship. It's a complete sellout at the racecourse ground, a venue steeped in football history, and kickoff is less than half an hour away. And I'm delighted to say, joining us here at the racecourse ground, a legend in these parts, Mark Hughes. Oh, come on. <laughs> Good afternoon, guys. Alan Shearer, of course, <laughs> and, and part owner. Ryan Reynolds, Indeed. and um, thank you Indeed. very much for taking time thank for talking you. to thank us. Thank you guys for taking yeah. time. I'm, stand, I'm, uh, I'm standing amongst legends here. Yeah. This is incredible. I'm very excited today. Uh, tell us what it's like to own a football club. Well, I co-own this football club with Mr. <laughs> Rob McElhenney, yeah. um, and it is, on, genuinely speaking, it has been the, the greatest experience of my entire life, my own children and family notwithstanding, <laughs> because I know I'll come back to haunt me. Um, but it has just been, this adventure yeah. has been unlike anything else. And, it's, and I'm, I love that I love it, because it's a, it's a project that is going to be yeah. multi-decades. Yeah. And, uh, and this town and this club yeah. and all that it entails is just magic. It truly Tell is. Me how and why this town and this club well we wanted to get involved in this uh, particular uh, uh, hellacious sport and I say <laughs> that because it's uh, it's 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 part plague part obsession uh, and, and part true passion but um, we wanted to get involved we looked at a bunch of different clubs we uh, eventually uh, looked at Wrexham and it just it, everything about it spoke to us uh, the, 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 the history, the story, the community, the, the support that's already there. The fact is that this club, when, when we arrived, was already perfect. It just needed awareness and a little bit of help. And that's what we're here to do. Um, we're not here to make decisions of what happens down on the pitch, thank God. Um, <laughs> but we are, we are here to support this community, this club, and, and raise it as high as possible. How have you found the connection with the local people here? It's been brilliant. I mean, I, I love I love getting here early because I get to meet uh, some of the locals as well and some of the supporters who've been coming here for decades and decades. Um, you know, I met a supporter the other day whose uh, uh, grandfather's ashes were yeah. scattered across this field. So I mean, I look at this place of it like a church uh, is what it really is, and um, um, it's it's a, it's really a, bore a special place in my heart and my entire family's heart, and I think across the pond as well in canada where i'm from people are obsessed with this club mm. and this community and so are people in the united states and it's just been it's been a, a, a pretty remarkable yeah yeah you're probably making the club famous right around the world <laughs> especially in north america well we're trying yeah, yeah it's wild to see i mean you know we i think I, we sold a, a twenty four thousand jerseys i think this year and, I, and so many of them went to canada and north america we can't they, they so we can't get them anymore they're just <laughs> i can't get one um I'm so sure you can. yeah it's been well yeah maybe if, I, maybe if i'm maybe i'm willing to test ollie palmer down there and tackle him and take his jersey yeah. off of his back but um 
No, it's been it's been amazing. The reception overseas is the part I think that's been most yeah. surprising for us uh, across Europe and across, of course, in North America. It's been really really remarkable. Mark, as someone from from these parts, tell mm. us tell us what people are thinking about how it's progressing. Well, the impact that the, the guys have had in, since they've come in has been phenomenal. Um, I'm a Wrexham boy. I'm, I'm just from three miles down the road, and goodness me, uh, everybody's just talking about these guys and the impact that they have. Yeah. How? How surprised have you been by the, the level of support that you've got? Because it's been immense. Everybody's really delighted that you're here. It, it has been immense. Yeah. That was never yeah. something that we expected, or, yeah. but it's some, certainly something we appreciate. Um, you know, both Rob and I have, a, have had a very specific mission statement that we set forth at the beginning, and our job is to make sure that each one of those boxes get ticked. Yeah. I think the part that I find most gratifying is the support from the community outside Absolutely. of just the club. Mm -hmm. um, the, the fact that Wrexham has become a tourist destination for so many folks <laughs> and that they're showing Which up is at quite the turf. surprising. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm from I mean, here. It so. really <laughs> is amazing. But this town, there is something special about this mm -hmm. town. And you might not be able to say it's this or it's that. It's a collection. It's the sort of the sum of all its parts. There's something um, that's going on here that's, that's really unique. I read a quote from you that it was a living, breathing, screaming, nightmare and you love the sport that much yes. that you hate it yes <laughs> why yes. I, I, I i'm now in so in love with this sport that i actually hate it yeah. uh, i wish i'd never met it, it yeah i wish i'd never met well my days uh my weeks my months my years were sort of uh uh, uh calendared around rex and matches and uh uh, I, in, in some ways, I wish they weren't, but it's been, it really has been the gift that keeps on giving, you know, this club and this community, win or lose, we're all doing it together. And, um, and it's, it's just been, it's just been do, remarkable. Do you get nervous watching? The games. Well, I get, of you course, get I, get there's, I, you know. I get about 10,000 steps up here each each match. I'm walking back and forth. I'm pacing around like a caged lion. I get nervous because, you know, a, a, a match like today, yeah. you know, look, this is, Sheffield United is three mm. leagues above us, yeah. 70, te 70 teams above us. Um, this is an extraordinary moment. It's, da it's a da classic you'll, David you'll versus phrase, Goliath. You'll hear a phrase. Yeah. This is what the FA Cup is all this about. Is what the, but that's where I'm going with this. <laughs> you go. It's a classic David versus Goliath story. <laughs> but you guys know this more than anybody yeah. on earth. That This is football. This is yeah. a beautiful game. And absolutely anything can happen. And I think I'm going to go on record right now and say that there is a chance, albeit a very slim chance, that Sheffield United pulls off a miracle today. <laughs> where, 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 where do you, where do you see yourselves in 10 years' time? Uh, in 10 years' time, uh, you know, the plan is, uh, it is now and has always been Premier League. Um, right. I, I can't really put a date on that, but yeah. if it's theoretically possible to go from fifth division to Premier League, why wouldn't we do it? Nobody's ever done anything great in this world thinking like, you know what, let's go halfway. Yeah. Um, yeah. We want to go all the way, um, and we believe we can do that. We believe we can expand this uh, incredible stadium. It's the oldest international football stadium on earth to something that would support um, international matches. It was something that would support a Premier League team, and that's, uh, that, is, that is the goal. Call yeah. us crazy if you want, but that's, yeah. that's, that's what we're here to do. Crazy. <laughs> Great. Uh, <laughs> I'll I'll take it. I saw Rob, Rob McElhenney, your, your, your partner, has said something. His favorite phrase in football is, yeah. is squeaky bum time. Squeaky bum time. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> My favorite favorite phrase in football boy i don't i still don't even know what squeaky bum time is i imagine that involves <laughs> antibiotics of some kind, or, or you need them after it, <laughs> okay i think right. it was phrased by uh, sir alex ferguson yeah. he yeah, said yeah. it's like that the minutes towards the end when it gets yeah. really tense oh 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 god or yeah towards the end of a season oh, oh yeah i don't have a favorite yeah. english from you probably I, I, had I'm it Canadian, in grimsby in the so. game when you lost 5-4 in the well, playoffs that, those were invectives that are not suitable yeah. for your audience <laughs> or any audience around but those are some of my favorite football expressions for sure yeah uh yeah. Yeah. And um, looking at here, do, at the team today going out, what do you think their chances are realistically against Sheffield United? Realistically, I, you know, I would say that if it, the fact that we're in this church right now, where that we're at, at the race course ground, um, if I were Sheffield United, I'd be taking this game, this match very, very seriously. That's, I'll, I'll well say that. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently we've got a nice bottle of gin waiting for us in there. Yeah. You do. You have actually a case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. So, Ryan, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, it, listen, it was an honor to join you guys. Thank you very so much. Thank you. We wish you all the very best. Um, Good luck. We're going to talk about Sheffield. Sheffield United now. The last of Sheffield United's four FA Cup wins came way back in 1925 when they beat Welsh opposition at Wembley, a 1-0 win over Cardiff City. The Blades' current crop are on a magnificent run, winning 11 of their last 13 games, including six consecutive victories away from home. Let's get the thoughts of their manager, Paul Heckingbottom. He's been speaking to Kelly Summers. 
Paul, what an occasion. Two teams in great form. What sort of game are you expecting here today? Certainly a tough game, but I think, yeah, the occasion, it's got a different feel to it, this cup tie, like a, yeah, like a big one for the round. Um, so we know what to expect. We're going to try and embrace that feeling and, and come away with a positive result, even though we know how formidable Phil's team's been here. We've, we've come here to try and win, so yeah, we're going to try and deliver a, a good performance and add to the occasion. We know that promotion from the Championship is the ultimate aim. What sort of mentality do you want to see from your players going into this today? Just how we usually perform. Um, obviously, we've made changes, but that's not taking anything away from this competition. It's to, to protect the players we've got. We've got some players who need minutes, and that's where they are. Um, so this game's good for us. It's good for those players to get the minutes. It's good for, for us to rotate the squad. Um, but we've been doing that in the league games anyway, so I don't want anyone to think it's, um, it's us taking this game lightly. Yes, Paul Higginbottom side are on a roll this season and look to have taken significant steps towards a return to the Premier League. They are, though, currently subject to a transfer embargo by the EFL due to an overdue payment to another club. Those concerns aside, Alan, uh, Paul Heckett's bottom side have been doing particularly well. They're brimming with confidence. But this is a different challenge. Yeah, Andy, Andy knows that. Um, he's changed the team from last time out, well, five changes. So he's given other players an opportunity. But you, yeah, yeah, you have to keep the form going. Yeah. There's now an opportunity for, uh, for those guys to come out and do it. And it's going to be tough. They're coming here. They know what this place is about now. You can, you can feel the atmosphere. We've been here for a few hours now. It is electric here. So they're going to have to face that and handle that, um, so it's going to be a really, really tough game for them. What's the key to avoiding an upset in these sort of encounters, Mark, as a manager who's been around for a while now? Well, my take on it would be don't, don't concede early or at any yeah. stage in the game. If you, <laughs> you're Sheffield United, really difficult fixture for them. Clearly, it's, they've got their own priorities, as Wrexham have, but um, Wrexham in fans have gone really strong, which, yeah. which I'm pleased about. It's going to be one, one heck of a cup tie, I feel. Yeah. Yeah, Sheffield United have made five changes. Um, they won at, at Millwall in the last round, so that sh shows they're of stern stuff because oh, yeah. it's, it's never an easy place to, to go and get yeah. a victory, is it? No, absolutely, yeah. And, and the, the, the form they're in, um, the confidence that they're shown, um, and that was all there in this, uh, in this cup game. Jefferson and Ball getting, the, uh, getting both their goals there. So, yeah, um, as tough as it's going to be, they, they shouldn't fear coming here because, of, as I said, the form that they're in, they'll be looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it lifts everyone when you've got a game like this. And, and I suppose, I mean, we talked about the Ryan Reynolds thing and the documentary and stuff, but it, it, but it adds to it, adds to the magic, doesn't it? Even for, for players coming here, they get a glimpse of Ryan Reynolds, everyone gets excited. Yeah. Even you did, Mark. We all got a bit giddy, <laughs> I thought. But, um, yeah, it's a great story. I, yeah. I mean, I'm, I've been away of it for, uh, for the last couple of years because, obviously, my family yeah. still lives in the area. And, yeah. and what they've done and what impact yeah. that they've had is is huge um, you see their engagement with fans I think that's yeah. the big thing that they've been able to do so well and that's the reason that they they get such such good levels of goodwill towards them. I didn't realize you had something in common with them um, Ryan Reynolds Alan. neither of you have won the FA Cup <laughs> <laughs> didn't take long to get that <laughs> I think that's a hugely important thing what yes yeah. What the guys are doing is actually engaging with, with yeah. the, the community here. Absolutely. Everyone's on board yeah. and they're so excited and so they should be. Uh, we all are. There is a famous precedent as far as FA Cup upsets are concerned on this ground. Uh, just ask Wrexham's Class of 92. <laughs> With eight minutes left, five there is the captain, Mickey Thomas. It's Thomas who takes it. Oh, what a goal, Mickey Thomas! The magic little man. Six minutes left. Watkin. Oh, he scored! And Arsenal face humiliation. And there's the whistle. Wrexham have achieved a really famous FA Cup victory. And we can hear now from the man who scored perhaps the most famous goal ever on this ground. Uh, Mark Hughes might argue that. Uh, Kelly is with Mickey Thomas. Yes, Gary, for all of the talk of the modern fairy tale taking place here at Wrexham, for many Wrexham fans, this man is still very much their hero. Mickey, that goal against Arsenal, one of the greatest FA Cup upsets in history. Well, how do you reflect on it all now? 
Um, never forget it, of course. It's shown every year, every time the FA Cup comes round. So I'm very lucky, but it wasn't just about Mickey Thomas, about a team performance. Uh, it's, it's a great strike. Um, against Arsenal, the, the best team at that moment. A special goal, special memories, of course. But for everyone in that ground that day, 14,500, they will never forget that. And, and I was lucky enough to score that goal, but it was a team performance. We had an enormous amount of luck on the day. Arsenal are a great side, but they couldn't get that second goal. And I get the equaliser and Steve Walking gets the winning goal. I can see your smile on your face when yeah. you talk about that. Remarkable memories. Of course, it's been a remarkable time for this football club in recent years as well. You can probably hear the atmosphere down here pitch side at the moment. What's it been like ever since Ryan Reynolds and Rob came into the club? It's incredible. You know, the, the atmosphere, the, the crowd, full house every game now, you can't get a ticket. It's incredible what they've done. And I think, you know, for the future, it looks fantastic. You know, we want to get back into the Football League. That's the priority this season. But an FA Cup run is, is good as well. And, of course, all eyes are, will be on promotion back to the EFL. But as, in terms of today, how do you think they can perform another huge upset? It's a possibility we can win the game, no question. I mean, Sheffield United are a very good side. They're doing well in the championship. But, you know, we have a little bit of luck on the day. You never know. It might happen. You know, what, 10,000 crowd here today. They're expecting Repton to win that, and I am as well. There's another shock on the horizon, I'm sure it is. Look at that, you heard it here first. There is another shock on the horizon. It's absolutely incredible down here pitch side. I know we say it during every single FA Cup game, Gary, but the atmosphere feels a bit more like a concert or something like that. This is what the FA Cup is all about. These Wrexham fans in fine voice waiting to see if another hero can follow in the footsteps of this man. Indeed, Imahidu, we heard it quite a lot, didn't we, the anthem during um, the World Cup when Wales uh, were, were taking part. Um, you did, of course, score a very famous goal at this, this ground, uh, Mr Hughes. You were the king of the volley, though, I have to say. <laughs> I mean, um, I had the good fortune to play with you for a while. Yeah. Bosh. Look at that. Well, I did say it was because I didn't like particularly heading the ball, so... Uh... <laughs> I always prefer to, to volley games, so uh, goals rather. So yeah, that was that was a great moment. Uh, it's a shame that the the big cup end isn't in uh, in use at the moment, but uh, yeah, good memories. Yeah, um, the atmosphere here as uh, as well. We've we've, we've just got a, a kind of feeling of it. Um, it, it re I mean, it's a small ground, and actually, normally when there's one ground, one side of the stadium that's empty, um, it takes away from it. But it doesn't seem to here. No, no, not at the moment. The place is absolutely bouncing. You used to come as a, as a young boy. Yeah, yeah, I played many games here as an international, played um, school by internationals actually, and yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's always been a, a big part yeah. of my football in life. It's, uh, it's a special place, and when you get days like this, this, yeah. this is when you, the wider domain understands what it is around here. Yeah. 16 home wins this season out of 16 games, Alan. Yeah, and they're a very experienced side. There's just under 2,000 league appearances in this um, Wrexham, Wrexham starting 11 today. So they've been around the block a bit. They'll yeah. know what they're up against. Uh, they'll know how to handle this uh, atmosphere, obviously. Um, but yeah, this place yeah. is rocking. You're manager at Bradford now, uh, Mark, as was um, Phil Parkinson yeah, yeah. Um, way back when. He, did, he, he had that famous victory, of oh, course. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's still talking about it. Chelsea at Stamford. Yeah, Park. this was one of the famous Bradford wins. Unbelievable performance and, and the result on the day uh, still talked about now as you would yeah, imagine. They were 2-0 down, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, 2-0 down, down and came back 4-2. Yeah. yeah, I mean he's he's got a great reputation, rightly so, in, in Bradford and, he, and he's doing the similar yeah. thing here. You, you know him, don't you, Mark? Yeah. from Southampton? I was I did the old YTS scheme with him two years of apprenticeship yeah. at, uh, yeah. at Southampton and yeah. he was um, he's a bit of a prickly midfielder, like loved to put his foot in, very much like this guy here. Um, <laughs> And you could see, you know, he always, he, he spoke well about the game, he's intelligent, he was always on about different formations and positions then, at such an early, early age. Yeah. Paul, Paul Mullen, up front, yeah. scored, what, 27 goals uh, this season, that's good going. This season, in any, actually any 59 in, in 76 for, yeah. for Wrexham, so he knows the position inside out, he's very, very good at what he, uh, at what he does. He knows how to put the ball in the back of the net, and at any level, whatever level you're playing against, that's the most important uh, thing. Gets his shot away um, early on occasions, doesn't think about it at all. As I said, he knows where he is, he knows how to operate. This is a great finish, top corner, there you go. This is the best one here, the way he just takes it early when it comes to him. Just look at that, keeper's got no chance, he doesn't set himself, so he gets a chance, you'd expect him to put it away. Yeah. Are we going to see an upset, Mark? 
I hope so. Um, <laughs> I've been here in the past when there's been upsets, so uh, there's no reason why you, why they can't do it. They're, they're a team playing with, with great confidence and, and great form. Yeah. The, their home form here is, is really special, so it's, it's, yeah. it's going to be a great game, I feel. I don't, I don't think I've ever, I've ever been to ground where they, that one of the owners are actually that popular. They usually hate it. It'll never everyone, last. It'll you never. better make the most of it because in three years, when they keep yeah. going up, you want yeah. them to spend 100 million on a centre forward. Yeah. I, I mean, it was interesting that he said this is a decades thing, not a one off, because I think that's yeah. what probably the concerns of some of the fans are. It's a gimmick, it yeah, might, it's just for the TV show, but it does seem that he, they're yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's really reassuring. Strange. I think that's that was the worry initially that they were just coming here to maybe film a, film yeah. a couple of. Netflix series and then yeah. disappear over the sunset. But clearly they, they've got an emotional connection to the place now, so that's really, really great for everybody. I think he's enjoying himself. I, th I think he is. Well, he's, I mean, he's flown over America for, from yeah. America for, for the game, and I think he's hopping straight off afterwards. But he's he's got the best view in the house and, and shows. He's taking his, his daughter to school tomorrow morning. Yeah. Flying back tonight, and just taking his daughter to school tomorrow morning. That is commitment. That is commitment from the daughter as well. She's very young, obviously, but um, uh, fantastic scenes. Yeah. Um, how do you think it's going to go, Alan? I think it's going to be a really tight game. Um, yeah. It is a great atmosphere, and I can I can see a bit of an upset. I think Wrexham, yeah. The writing's on the wall, is it? We shall see. Here we go then. Time to join our commentary team of Danny Gabadon and Jonathan Pearce. Thanks very much, Gary. Good afternoon, everybody. The sellout famous old racecourse ground tingling. An historic set in the ground, 216 years old. The legends of past FA Cup shots here linger on the air. The current home record of 16 wins on the spin, the best in the land. And the future plans of those Tinseltown stars. It's a, a heady old mix. But Sheffield United do come here with the best away record in the top four divisions. And they are steaming towards a Premier League return despite their financial problems. And they are determined to censor this Hollywood script today. Special day, Danny Gabadon. It certainly is, Jonathan. Fantastic atmosphere here at the racecourse. Been a while since I've been in this stadium. I think the last time I was here, I was wearing a Welsh shirt when the Odd International used to be here. A lot of things have changed since then. Celebrity owners, investment into the team, investment into the community. And Wrexham are a team that are trending in the right direction right now. All eyes are on them. Can they produce another giant killing shock? Already taken one championship team out in the previous round. They'll fancy their chances this afternoon, they really will. Ron Reynolds was just communicating on the phone to Rob McElhaney back in the States. And you've seen pictures of him here. He went round the three sides of the ground, shaking hands, smiling, laughing. They are upwardly mobile, Wrexham. Can this be the major shock of the day, of the weekend, of many an FA Cup weekend? Out they come. Will Sheffield United be the four guys? The history of Wrexham studied with FA Cup upsets. He's loving every minute. Great scenes. Well, let's have a look at the teams in detail. Wrexham unchanged when we were in at uh, Winnet Gateshead. Keeper Mark Howard played for Sheffield United in their 2014 semi final defeat against Hull. Regular back three. Hayden has 12 goals this season, a club record for a defender. Tozer and Newport side that held Tottenham at this stage five years ago. Tannercliffe scored for Crawley in beating Leeds in round three in 21. Ford played in the Premier League with Wolves. McFudgeon on the left had 10 years at Sheffield United as a youngster. Tom O'Connor scored at Coventry in round three. Young hasn't missed a minute of the cup run. Elliot Lee's dad, Rob, captain Newcastle in the 98 cup final. And up front, Mullen looks to become the first non-league player to net in rounds one to four inclusive for 38 years. Alongside him, Ollie Palmer, he's got 14 goals. He's the club's record signing. Sheffield United again bring in Aaron Davis for the cup. He made his Welsh debut here. Ahmed Hodzic sat out the third round win at Millwall. Egan was in their 2020 quarter-final side, as was Chris Basham, who replaces Robinson for only his second start since November. Right wing back Bogle, who scored at the Den, as you've seen, has three and three, actually. Ben Osborne gets his first start in six weeks with Lowe 
not risked. And in midfield, Manchester City loanees Tommy Doyle, grandson of two 69 Cup winners, and McAtee, who replaces Sandor Berg. Fulham closing in on him, we hear. Ollie Norwood anchoring midfield. Didn't miss a minute since the opening day. Up front, Ollie McBurney comes back. The top scorer, Di, whose toe problem keeps him on the bench. It's McBurney's first start since a foot injury in November. He plays alongside young Jebison. Well, two managers with promotion on their mic. But today, in the immediate, Canfield Parkinson's Wrexham creates a major surprise, as he did with Bradford City all those years ago at Stamford Bridge at uh, Chelsea. They beat Sunderland in the following round. They went out in round six to his old club, Reading. Mullin up front. Well, a man who knows where the net is, Paul Merlin. Important afternoon for him. A lot of eyebrows were raised when he scored all those goals for Cambridge and decided to drop down a couple of divisions and, and join your excellent. But he's certainly been worth the outlay. His goals return been absolutely fantastic. And it's very much that big man, little man, strike partnership alongside strike partner Ollie Palmer. They will be crucial. Sheffield United in the white and black will kick us off and underway, kicking from right to left. The referee is Dean Whiteston from Northamptonshire. Over 400 EFL games under his belt. A veteran referee. Took Sheffield United twice this season already. They won both games, incidentally. And off we go then. The ball looped long towards the far side. Immediately in action, Elliot Lee, who has started where he played against Oldham in round one. And I uh, was in the commentary box on the left-hand side. Wrexham had intimated this week he would play in a slightly deeper role and break forward from that deeper role in a more central position. I think Sheffield United got wind of that. Maybe they change later on. It's a corner kick straight away to Sheffield United on their right-hand side. Off. Luke Young, who's the very heartbeat of this club. Corner kick for Sheffield United. We taken by Tommy Doyle, grandson of Mick, and Glyn Pardo, that 69 cup side, sadly, departed. We've got Bernie, the main danger in there, of course. John Egan is alongside him. It comes in towards McBurney and Sheffield United lead after one minute and four seconds. That's what he was brought into the starting lineup to do. Not the Hollywood script he would have liked. It's a dream start for Sheffield United. Tommy Doyle, fantastic technician. Whips the ball into that near post from Bernie just breaks free from the edge of the 18 yard box. No one really follows him. It's a bullet header past Howard into that near post. Absolute dream start for Sheffield United. Exactly the start Paul Hagginbottom would have wanted from his team. Been out with ankle and foot problems for a couple of months this season. Last start was November the 8th. He was part of the quarter-final side that lost to Arsenal in 2020 and a year later to Chelsea. And more problems here for Wrexham. Jordan Tunnicliffe is the man needing treatment. And also young McAtee is there. Let's see how they got those injuries. Yeah, by his own player, the goal scorer, McAtee, is Bernie. Yeah, I think Bernie came through him. Into that near post from Doyle. And it's just a little maybe kick there. After the goal goes in, not sure if it was intentional or not, but McAtee's down, Tommy Cliff as well, but great delivery into that near post, but from the Wrexham point of view, really disappointing the marking, and Bernie's able to get free. Excellent header on that near post. Grizzly start for Wrexham. 16 wins in a row. Unbeaten in regulation play for 22. They did lose on penalties in the FA Trophy at Altrincham three games ago. The 
is having to put up with so many problems with the transfer embargo imposed because uh, they fell behind with payments to another club. That club has been reimbursed, I understand, by the EFL fund for just that purpose, and therefore Sheffield United, I believe, need to repay the EFL. Tony Clough limping away, played in that Crawley side that beat Leeds, scored in that day, and went down at Bournemouth in the round four tie 2021. And uh, getting ready, though, I don't think he's going to come on quite yet. Young Cloweth, who played at Coventry in the last round. Well, this is a real blow. It is their, it is their normal back three, and they'll have to interrupt. It's not clever who's going to come on. It's someone else, I think. And it is clever who's coming on. And Jaden Bogle will take the throw when we get going again. It is Max Plewith who comes on. And that is a blow for Wrexham. A double blow then early on. Just signed a new deal as the 20-year-old. He played the, the one game in the competition against Coventry. He's played a baker's dozen of games this season, though, in all. As you say, Jonathan, not the start Rexon would have been looking for. I'm sure the team talk would have surrounded, starting on the front foot, getting after Sheffield United to see too early from a set piece. It is a point for Rexon, and obviously the injury to Tunnicliffe. It's just a double whammy, really. I need time just to readjust. Played at Coventry because Hayden missed that game injured. His right side of the centre back trio. It's Ahmed Hodzic who loves to bring the ball out. A firm favourite of the Sheffield United fans since joining from Malmo in the summer. Bernie's third FA Cup goal in his uh, meandering career. Now they've got another problem. And it is Aaron Hayden this time. They've already lost one centre back, Danny. And this could go from bad to worse for X. And just looks like he's flexing that right ankle, Hayden. Don't really see exactly what happened there. He doesn't look happy, and neither does that man, Phil Parkinson. Questions being asked in that Wrexham technical area. So Parkin is there, he was with Phil Parkinson at Bradford and Bolton and uh, Sunderland, Jack Lester from Sheffield United striker, one of the coaching staff, but it'll be he who has to make the decision. And it's all turned sour for Wrexham. National League leaders in the opening seven minutes. I wish I could tell you how he picked up the injury, but I haven't got a clue, Danny. Yeah, it just looked like he was flexing the ankle, or maybe it's a possible calf injury. I'm not sure if there was any contact involved, or maybe he's pulled something there. But I'm interesting to see if he's able to carry on here or not. They do have uh, Reese Hall Johnson on the bench, who is nominally a right back played there against Coventry, he could come on and they could reshuffle. You mentioned Jonathan, it would be a blow if he has to come off, Hayden. He scored a lot of goals this season from that centre-back position, there's something like the attacks that bent toes along throw very well. It's a negative at both ends of the pitch for Wrexham, this. He's limping, he's back on, and he's not comfortable. Toza winds up for the long throw. It is enormous. 
echoes of Ian Hutchinson and the long throws of Chelsea of yesteryear in the 1970 Cup final against Leeds. His brother, I think, will be in the crowd. Big fan of his Wrexham playing, sibling, and Hayden's day, I think, has come to an end. You'd be disappointed, he really will. Big, big game for these Wrexham players. Chance to test yourself against higher opposition, as they did in the previous round. Did so well against Coventry. To lose two of your central defenders in the opening eight minutes. Difficult one for the manager. Time to reshuffle again. It's going to be James Jones who comes on for them. He's a cup ever present this season, including the qualifying round against Blythe Sparks, which went to a replay. This is the furthest he's gone in the competition. He's a former Crew Lincoln player. He got promotion with Crew to League One. He's captained the team recently uh, in the FA Trophy, but I don't think he expected to be involved at this stage in this game. I just wonder because. Jones is really a defensive midfield player, central midfield player. Danny, will they reshuffle and go to a four, do you think? Yeah, quite possibly. Interesting to see what they do. They do generally play this 5-3-2 system, so there might be a reluctance from Phil Parkinson to want to change that, but it looks like Jones has gone into that kind of midfield area. Two centre-backs gone in the opening ten minutes and a goal down. Crowd retains its energy though. This is slipped back to goalkeeper Howard. What can Rexham do here? Jones, his first touch off the bench, and Ford. And there's Tozer. Is now to his right hand side. It's long. Oh, is that a penalty? I just wonder there. The referee says no. Adam Davis came out and down went Paul Mullet. That's a throw in. There's no VAR here, don't forget. He's irate. And rightly so. I think there is contact there. It's that ball played forward by Anthony Thord in behind Basham. He gets there first, Paul Mullin. And he knows if he does, and the contact's going to come. Gets there first. Is there contact? Wow. Maybe just looking for it. Slightly there, Adam Davis. Slightly lucky. Mullin gets there first, but it's almost then as his foot's dropping down to the floor. Probably not, in, not enough in that for me. So looking forward to coming back here, Adam Davis. Last debut on this ground in uh, March of, of 2019. Against Trinidad and Tobago. He's forward. And in towards Luke Young. O'Connor has gone into the back three on the left-hand side. And have got over their early woes, and this is a decent little spell now for them, Danny. Yeah, good reply from the home side. Sheffield and I doing exactly what they wanted to do, started again, quieting the home crowd, getting that early goal, but a good response from Wrexham last couple of minutes with the back of the conceding the goal and a couple of injuries. Watch for Palmer in here for the near post flick on from the toes of long throw. He's six foot five, Ollie Palmer. And Mullen normally picks up the pieces. It's aimed at Palmer for that flick off. And out came Davis. Might have been caught. And it's wide anyway. O'Connor up from the back has a happy knack of scoring goals. And that's so difficult to deal with those long throws from Toza. Win the first contact, but so difficult to clear that 18-yard box. That challenge from Mullen. Smokes Davis drop the balls. You see it's flicked on. Mullen with the challenge. It's a difficult chance. 
on that fourth post. I think it was O'Connor just looking to put the ball back on target. Has played at the back before. And a free kick. One by him. The seventh start in a row. He's having a good spell. The Irish 23-year-old started his career at Southampton. Didn't make the grade there. Deal for Conan to step back into that centre back position, but doing well drawing a foul from Bogle there. Flowers on the far side of the penalty area, it's aimed towards him. He stole the match on McBurney. Was there a shove there as well? The Wrexham supporters, it won't surprise you, are screaming for everything. Stone the referee. Mm, it's going to be a difficult one for Sheffield United. They keep giving away free kicks on throws, even. It's not something you normally think about. Not just in play or defender, certainly clearing your lines, getting the ball off the pitch, but it might be something Sheffield United will need to be aware of with that Bentles a long throw because it's coming in from all distances. So you know it's better off keeping the ball on the pitch. I know it sounds a bit funny, but this is Mullen. He's done well there against Basham. Tried to lay it back, it was well read by the experienced John Egan. Wrexham buzzing at the moment, a one down. It's intercepted easily by Ben Osborne. I have to mention the last two, but he hasn't started since December the 10th. They have had uh, injury problems this season, Sheffield and Ireland still do. The wing backs are out at the moment. Stevens is out, Bulldog out. O'Connell hasn't played for a couple of years, of course. Max Lowe has had his problems with the hamstring, he's only on the bench. And Sander Berg, it seems, is off to Fulham, if you believe the reports. And as we heard from the manager beforehand, left out today, Paul Heckenbottom keeping it a secret anymore, they've known of the interest from one or two clubs, one or two clubs in Serie A as well. Roma were involved, Milan as well. Here's Basham. And Osborne. his way forward. It's been a sensational goal from wide on the left against Coventry in the last round. He claimed it was a, a shot. It looked like a cross to many people watching on his McBurney. This goes O'Connor. Versatile player can play left back as well. Tom O'Connor. Bogle with a throw then. Forward. Super pass in there to Jefferson. Once again to Mullen leading the line. Just possessed by Basham. Slip forward here, this is dangerous. The run was by young Daniel Jefferson. He worked the move really well, Sheffield United. There's Tommy Dahl just finding that pocket of space here. Just looking to slip Jefferson in, just slightly overhit the through ball. Harold, really good starting position, gets that little bit of luck after as well. Ball just bouncing off his knee and back into his hands. Towards Jefferson. Lifted away by Cloweth. Coventry away in the last round. His first appearance since October, Cloweth. He's an unfamiliar centre back three now for them for lots of reasons. Here's McBurney. And Sheffield United him pouring forward. McAtee um, was up in support. The shot took a deflection and away wide. 
And put in block from Clareth in the end. Lovely centre forward play initially between McBurney and Jebison to set this attack up, and ball just gets fed to McAtee there. And block from Clareth coming across. McAtee's brother John was brilliant here for Grimsby last season in the playoff semi final, second leg scored. Nixon's promotion dream of the Hollywood superstars was ended for that season anyway. Desperate to avoid the playoffs, this. With Britain, no nonsense, the referee was a Met police officer for 16 years. Got to be in the quadrant. I'm saying the ball is rolling off it. As long as it touches that line, it's OK, barely touching it. They don't care these days, do they? And still the pressure is on, but Bernie cuts the ball into the penalty air, saw the run in there. And Petit had made that run. And Wrexham looked to counter. And it comes to Anthony Ford, the right wing back. On the outside, it's a dangerous cross towards that far post area. And it had to be cleared by Johnny. And a brilliant centre forward play from Paul Merlin. Winning the ball back in his own half. And he sets forward away down his right hand side. Dangerous delivery across that six yard box. Egan doing really well here. Good positioning on that far post. Only Palmer just following in. Using all his experience there, Egan, of 380 club career games, where 20 minutes into the match, corner loops in, and that's uh, easy for Adam Davis. And disappointing delivery there. Opportunity to get players up the field in that 18-yard box, only make it difficult for Sheffield United, but clean catch for Adam Davis. Going. Work hard in that midfield area. James Jones. Started against Blythe in the cup earlier on. 1-1 one, one it was away from home. They won the replay 3-2. Under pressure again here, though. This is a strong, determined run by Daniel Jefferson. Looks lively, Danny. It certainly does. Brilliant link play again between the two centre forwards with Birdie into Jebison again. Pace power gets a shot away. It's a really positive driving into that space, looking for that far corner, low shot. Really good save from Howard, diving low to his right. We're back into the starting lineup against Hull nine days ago and scored. It's keeping Billy Sharp. Club captain out of the side at the moment. Egan is in there. Akmanodic is in there as well. A roar from the Wrexham fans behind that goal as it's cleared away. And here come the home side on the break. Young sets Mullen away. His movement is causing problems to Sheffield United. It's reflected away off Ben Osborne. And brilliant play from Mullen again. Fantastic work rate, energy. Getting the ball back in play quickly. And Young feeds him back in. Gets his team up the pitch. The team's 71 places below Sheffield United in the pyramid, causing some problems now. O'Connor in his first fourth round tie with it. The back post. Bernie will be important at both ends of the pitch. Now the counter attack is on with McAtee. Direct. If he lifts his head up, he's got a player to his back on the side. He could quite slip it in though to the supporting run. Great atmosphere in the stadium. Tommy Doyle who made that supporting run to the right hand side. He is from range, and it's not a bad effort from the Manchester City youngster on loan at Sheffield United.
Good cup try. McAtee. Basham. They're certainly not sitting on a 1 0 lead. They were looking for Basham there, played back by Cleworth. Sheffield United in round four for the fifth time in six years. They've got a good FA Cup pedigree, really. It is such a, a long, long time since they last won the competition 1925. As we saw earlier, they won the 1915 Khaki Cup final against Chelsea. An old track, and it was known as that because in the outbreak of war, a lot of the supporters were wearing their military uniforms. And FA Cup folk law history. Bogle brings it forward. They start defending by Ben Toza. They're going to freak it there for a foul, they're not going to get on Ollie Palmer. Ollie Norwood, an important figure now for Sheffield United at times, Danny. He's got to calm the tempo down there with his experience. Yeah, he's the one that dictates the tempo for Sheffield United. You see there, has that ability to hit those crossfield passes. Generally makes the right decision when he's on the ball, keeps him neat and tidy when he needs to as well. He's the man that makes them tick. A good career, hasn't he, Ollie Norwood, considering he was rejected at Manchester United as a kid. He's another man with fantastic technique. Tommy Doyle saw a lot of him on loan second half of the season at Cardiff City. Fantastic delivery from set pieces and not a man you can afford that amount of space to in those areas. Works the keeper well there. Yeah, a little bit of FA Cup history with Manchester City, played in the Fifth round for them against Swansea a couple of years ago. Is the flag about to be raised? Indeed it is. Never in doubt, surely. And don't forget, you can see every FA Cup goal this season on the BBC Sport website and the app. And just a reminder that the draw for the fifth round will take place on the One Show tomorrow evening. That's from 7 o'clock on BBC One. Palmer and Mullen holds it up back to Ollie Palmer. And they spread the play well here, Epsom. Four. Going to make the pitch big. Cuts inside. And he came back to him from Mullen. And cleared for Sheffield United. Back with Hodgic. That's a decent ball away to Jebison. I think it comes. Doyle with a little chip in there. Oh, a lot of space Tommy Doyle, and that's a foul by Bogle. Really feisty atmosphere, isn't it? Lovely. It certainly is. That crowd, Wrexham crowd, quieted the opening ten minutes with everything that went on. That early goal being conceded, obviously two injuries not helping as well, but just starting to get a bit of a foothold in this game now. The crowd starting to get... A little bit more involved, being some good link-up play from both sets of strikers, refreshing the seat. Two teams playing with strike pairings, don't see it too much in the modern game, but seeing Ollie Palmer and Pullman in link-up well, and very much the same, Jefferson and Ollie McBurney showing some nice touches. He's changed. Palmer's on the edge of the penalty, a moment slightly deeper. He's forward, he has got well down the right-hand side, he got the nod today, playing in that position. Of uh, the man who played against Coventry and Paul Johnson. It's a decent challenge, nothing wrong with it. In my point of view, initial reaction, Tommy Doyle's challenge. No great appeal from Elliot Lee, was there? Yeah, it just looked like he'd spun away, Elliot Lee, but just doesn't quite get the ball out of his feet. That allows Tommy Doyle to stick that left leg out and clearly win the ball. For the Sheffield United manager, the Hacking Bottom at Barnsley. And knows him well. And he toes her with the long throw. Five hundred and fiftieth 
club career game in all for Ben Toza. No echelons of the game. Here it comes, looking for a little flick on by Palmer. It's well defended and Sheffield United have defended that long throw well, really. That's a high boot raised by Toza. bogey has gone down. I'm sure it's something Sheffield and I would have worked on the last few days. Defending those long throws. I'm not sure if they've got a player in their training ground that can throw as far as Toza, but it's off the back of that long throw going in there. Toza just stepping into the ch challenge and Bogle coming off worse there, as you can see. You can see the blood. It'll have to be fixed up before he can go on. Second in the championship at the moment, 12 points clear of the third place team, Middlesbrough. Only 24 goals conceded, best defence in the championship, 27 away points, the best record in the top four divisions, eight away wins, best record as well. And Ollie McBurney has set them on the way to perhaps a seventh away win on the spin. As he spun away from his marker, Danny. Yeah, it was that fantastic start to the game from Sheffield United. And it's, it's Tony Cliff, he's trying to get tight to McBurney, but really good movement he's just in that kind of crowded area spins away to that near post gets that half a yard he's not the biggest of strikers but he's very good in the air attacks the ball aggressively it's a clinical header in the goal so Tunnicliffe was injured and moments later if you've just joined us one of his centre-back partners Hayden also went off this could be a problem for Sheffield United with Bogle that facial injury has started the last three, been out for a couple of months from October onwards. Out a long time last season as well with an injury, having knee problems. I've always found that a difficult one myself, Jonathan, as a, you know, a defender trying to defend those set pieces and you see three, four, five players all bunched together in an area and you're trying to kind of get touch tight, you're trying to man mark and it's very difficult to kind of lose your man. You almost sometimes want to Give yourself two or three yards just to see where your man's going to run. But you can see Tanikliff there on the goal where he's trying to get tight. And McBurney just spins away. He maybe gets caught in those bodies. And that half a yard is all McBurney needs to get that ball into the back of the net. 31 minutes play. Shipping and I trying to make the fifth round for the first time in three years. City at Bristol City at home, 1 0. Went through to the quarters and lost at Chelsea. Cup history, overall more illustrious that of Wrexham, who've reached the quarter-finals on three occasions. For the first time in round two since the turn of the century when they lost here against Cambridge. They haven't made the fifth round since 97. Toza. Donny holding slightly deep for by Nord. Just taken care of at the back by Callum McFadgett. He was 10 years at Sheffield United, played sort of 20 times for them. No comment. And here is McFadgett. From range, will shoot from anywhere. Certainly worth taking a strike on. He's been absolutely everywhere. Paul Mullin. So running in behind on this occasion, dropping deep and find some space to turn and space just opening up. So Alex to take the strike on, not too far away. He's the competition's top scorer. Seven goals he has scored in every round since Colin Williams of Telford in 1984-85 as a non-new player, scored in rounds one, two, three and four. He also scored against Blythe in the replay here in the last uh, qualifying round. Great example of Mullen, actually, of a player 
He just carried on plugging away, even though he didn't make it early on. He was at Everton and Liverpool, you know, Danny, and didn't make it there. Huddersfield didn't make it there, really. The cream always rises to the top, they say, Jonathan, and sometimes it can just be down to a manager's opinion, but you've just got to keep yourself going, keep plugging away, keep believing in yourself, and I understand he's got a little bit of Welsh in him as well, Jonathan, so maybe one or two... Wales scouts here in attendance. Nice. I think, he, I think he's qualified. And here he is. He can drop deep and bring other players in as well. This is a decent run. In support of the front three. It's by Clareth up from the back. And it's just on the uh, Sheffield United a little bit. Ogle is back on. Tells his first long throw in from the right, I seem to think. Sheffield United with ten back, and the referee wants to have a word. Taking off for young Max Cleworth, the 20 year old. Young player of the year he was last year, Clever. Turns his throw in and seeking in that near post area. And second for another throw. Moving towards that near post area. Uh, Egan and Ahmed Ahmedovic will want to win most of it. And it comes again. Unlucky deflection in the end off Luke Young. And you have to say, well defended by Sheffield United. As I say, I'm sure they would have worked on defending long throw set pieces the last couple of days. They do have good size in that back line, but every time that ball goes out of play, you know that it's going to be coming in. So far, so good from the Sheffield United point of view. I'm hearing that Jaden Bogle has broken his nose. Have those sort of nose plugs to launch the flow of blood. He's back on that far side though, careering forward here. And come back to him by Jebison. Remember Jebison uh, scoring in the Premier League as a. What have you been there? 17 against Everton, I think it was. Here's a poor old Jaden Bogle. I'm not sure he's going to enjoy attacking those long throws now. Jaden Bogle. Pressure, under pressure. Mullen is putting in a shift for Epson again. He's been brilliant, he's been everywhere. One of the best attacking work has come through him. Running behind, dropping short. He's a really difficult player to play against, just full of energy and movement. Sheffield United felt there that Norwood was fouled. Under 10 to go, there will be a significant chunk of stoppage time. Just a little bit of pale blue to the early evening sky up here. Not too cold. Good weather for a cup tie, Lee. That's from where he scored against Coventry out in that position in the last round. He's got forward in support, wants to get it, gets it on the dead ball line, hooks the cross into the middle. Mullen is there, give and go. That's well read. Right, Jefferson back there, found it. The ball stops to Anthony Fork. He gets a return from O'Connor. Plays it back to Tom O'Connor. Mullet. Good spell, good pressure of play from Wrexham again. Good link up between Palmer and Mullen with a snapshot on the edge of the box. Not quite able to get the power on the strike on that occasion, but it did look dangerous when able to get it into those two centre forwards. Now in his career, he's 
injuries in the last 12 months or so. Starting with a new knee ligament injury. Forward steps of Ross has had a decent game. Some players have never gone beyond this stage in the competition for played for also at Reading from seven years ago in round four. From Glasgow. A couple of yards for him to measure across. Well, it was a little bit slow getting out there. And the way through for Sheffield United. And the Wrexham fans loving that they had to go all the way back to Adam Davis. And it lead took the tumble. Ogles underneath that, that's his first test since he had the repair works done. Ackman Hodgic. Caught. Good touch by Munnin to bring it down. 28 for Munnin, he so has a chance to play at a higher level. And at Cambridge, was promoted with them, played at Chamney, was promoted with them. with the throw. Most of the old supporters in that ancient cop end will be trying to suck this in. To Mullet. Toza, he's going to get beyond his man on that far side. Noble stuck to it. And the big defender. To throw to Sheffield United. James Jones thought it should have gone the other way. Stuck to their task really well there. Sheffield United just trying to switch things up, Rex, and not didn't to service the box on this occasion. Toza just trying to do something different into the feet of Mullen and then back. Didn't really come off. I'd love to stay and see this job through, take them into the Football League again and onwards and upwards and watch the redevelopment of the ground. They hope to get that cop end completed in a couple of summers' time. A hitch over the financing of it at the moment. That shot was by Palmer. Charged down and he charged back to win it again. And that's got the crowd on their feet. Cost them a lot of money uh, in the summer to buy from Wimbledon. It was Certainly a six-figure sum. McAtee. Now Nord, he just sits in there and strokes at about, gets the ball, gives it. His tempo about his play. Howard <laughs> beaten in the second minute of the game against his old club for whom he played over a hundred games. Fault. Good take. And tried to find ahead of him Paul Mullen and fouled his man, free kick. And Norwell will bring it away. And by Ackman Hodzic. They could play it out to Bogle and do. Time he got the ball, Rexham were well set. Could have gone earlier there, Dan. Maybe quite possibly. Done a good job of that, though, Rexham. Went to press, went to kind of sit back in that shape and make it difficult. Asher. That's a corner ball. Ogle popping up on the left hand side. 
And just drove across the field from that right-hand side, Bogle. Ended up losing the ball, but when he covered it back, he just found himself on that left side. Just the drive towards the byline, forces the corner. And Bernie would be a danger in here again. Basham is in that mix with Egan and Akin Hodzic. Beyond the far post, and Bernie won't keep that in. And he found himself free on that far post again, no. Only McBurney. Different type of delivery from Doyle. Driven delivery to that far post. That man there, Paul Heckebon, will be delighted with the first half shown from his team. He would have known how important the start was to this game. Getting an early goal. Just calms those nerves. Fighting's in the, the home crowd. And alongside him there, Stuart McCall. Scored in the 89 Cup final, Everton against Liverpool, manager of Bradford and so on, and let's not forget Rangers. And as a player, he won the Scottish Cup three times. Time on top. Ford. Still going. Ruffled into the middle. Clear the way. Here's Young. And a little pool was there. Sonny Akin Hodgic was unhappy with the way that Mullen went down. And at the other end, Jefferson trying to get around. Mark Howard is thwarted. The crowd loved to Mark Howard there. Just about right. does enough there, Howard. As Jefferson gets there first. The ball just kind of sticks in the turf. That ball from back to front, and he's just committed himself, Howard. And there's no going back. He's got something on the ball. How to react quickly? Off he goes. He did lovely ball played forward by Norwood. He's just looking to flick that around, Howard Jefferson. Good goalkeeping in the end. He was brilliant against Coventry. Pulled off one stupendous save. Eh? Really important in that situation as a goalkeeper. He knows that he's not going to get there, but he's fully committed. He goes all the way, there's no hesitation. Bogle just getting a little bit too tight to McFadsey. Not massive amounts of contact there, but foul given. And Connor will take it. Normal suspects up front. Ben Tozer at six foot three, Ollie Palmer at six foot five. With seven goals this season. Comes back to the edge of the penalty. A big thump there by Elliot Lee that was blocked. Caught it well, really well. Important block. Fanchin will take it with a youth cup runner up. Sheffield United in his days there. And he's the way it was by Egan. And Basham attacks that one and Palmer made a back for him. Five minutes to go in stoppage time. Baby. That's the way his manager describes Daniel Jefferson, a 19-year-old, born in Ontario, though he emigrated when he was 13 to the UK. Jones rushing to take the throw. Play by Toza, Jones is underneath it. With him went Osborne, now McBurney to Ben Osborne. Jefferson, good technique. McAtee, 
crossing from Osborne. That's decent football by Sheffield United. Yeah, well worked. Intricate, quick one-touch passing and movement. It was Osborne just making a little dart down the side of the 18-yard box, but Jefferson McBurney involved again. McAtee sees the run of Osborne. Okay, was just coming across there, does really well defensively. If they can get a second before half-time, they'll be well on their way to an eighth win in nine games against non-league opposition in the cup. Farpo set it back in by McBurney and easily saved. In the end, and then the long clearance away. Bogle is back. We know how direct Mullen could be, and Bogle really committed himself. And Mullen will go for goal, parried away. And Sheffield United don't do a good job of getting the second ball out. And it was Bogle who went in for the challenge, as committed as ever. And the Wrexham fans thought there was a penalty. I don't think there was. Here's Jefferson now. Jefferson's still going, and Tosin will see him off, and he could have released him at Burnett. Just one touch too many from Jebison there. Fantastic play from Wrexham. That man Mullin again. So the quick thinking from Howard to release Mullin. He's always on the move, always looking to get on the ball. This is Paul from Bogle, sells himself, thinks he can win it. He takes the strike on, yes, it's a tight angle, but forces the save from Davis. Not a penalty for me. I think it was Young went down the box, was it? No, yeah, not for me. Bernie allowed to bring it down and turn. Jameson trying to work it out wide to Tommy Doyle. Sheffield so United win it back here. And Owen will carry it to the line. There's Jefferson not in order when that far side, it's clear. As they try and improve this old ground to get it back to international standard, they certainly have to do something with the lights, Danny. It's fairly gloomy out there, has to be said. And pretty dark up here as well, Jonathan, where we're sitting. And the umpires will get the light meters out. <laughs> Players in their day, Parkinson up toward Heckenbottom. Burning around the corner, looking for Jebison again. Oh, that's a mistake. The Sheffield United fashion comes in to win it back. Mullen isolated with the one defender back and tipped on the edge of the box by Egan. It's just on the outside of the penalty area. He's got a yellow card, the ball had gone wide, I think, for Mullins touch, so it wasn't denial of a goal-scoring opportunity, though Wrexham will claim it was, and they're saying it's in the penalty area. Yeah, Mullins thinks this is a penalty. It's really sloppy from McAtee, I think it is, plays a blind pass, Basham makes the tackle, but plays the ball right into the path of Mullins, he's really direct against Egan, drives inside of him. The referee gets this one correct, it is on the edge of the box, just that left leg dangled out by Egan, brings him down. I'd say it's a foot outside the penalty area, Egan is cautioned. But I think the ball had run out of Paul Mullins' control, that's why it wouldn't have been a, a denial of a, a goal-scoring opportunity. But how many times are they going to leave Paul Mullins isolated with one defender? Well, he's been brilliant. I think on that occasion, slightly unlucky because Basham's just looking to make the challenge and the ball just goes into his path, but it's really hard to keep track of Merlin. He's everywhere. He plays all across that front line. Bundle of energy, he really is. 145 career goals. And the Hollywood superstar that is Ryan Reynolds just wants one. Not happy yeah. with that decision, but the looks, the owner. If they had CGI here, they probably would have come up with some sort of goal for them. Oh, he will want to take it himself. Oh, is in the mix. Blasted at the wall. And the top scorer. Young is off after it. And the half 
half-time whistle comes. Booze from the Wrexham supporters. Phil Parkinson's side, 1-0 down in 64 seconds. And encouragement by Ryan Reynolds to stop them heading to that dead pool of, World Cup, of FA Cup elimination. They lost the two centre-backs in those opening ten minutes as well. But I'll tell you what, Danny Gabbard on, they came back and played some decent stuff and had their chances. Yeah, they certainly did. Everything that could have gone wrong in those opening ten minutes for Exxon did. Obviously conceding that early goal, two injuries to their two defenders. But you have to give them a lot of credit for the way they recovered after that. And managed to get a foothold in the game and largely due to that man Paul Mullen who's been an absolute live wire in that first half but I think Paul Hegginbottom will be fairly pleased with how his team have done in that first half getting that early goal but I do feel that this game's far from over. Championship side lead it against the National League team Sheffield United 1-0 up at the break. And a thoroughly entertaining uh, first half, not the way it would have, uh, they would have wanted to go here with the um, home crowd, but um, they've had a real go and they recovered well from early setbacks. Yeah, it was, a, it was an awful start for them, yeah. um, conceding the goal, losing the two centre-halves, yeah. Hayden and Tunnicliffe. But then they reacted really well, I, I thought. Um, the crowd responded to that, obviously disappointed. Um, not the start they were looking for, but the, the more the half went on, I think the more yeah. they sort of grew into it and then they created the better chances. But from a Sheffield United point of view, I think they've been very professional. Despite the changes that they've made, they've looked, they've looked very, a very good team. It could easily have run away from Wrexham in the, the early yeah. stages. Yeah, you feared the worst, obviously, with the start they had. Um, poor on, on the goal. Obviously, with the market, they, yeah. they would have talked about that, tried to get that right, obviously, in the game itself. Haven't done it and conceded as a result. But great response, I have yeah. to say. I have to say, uh, losing two centre-halves, goodness me, against at any level, that's going to hurt you. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's look at that first goal, uh, Alan. I mean, uh, excellent header and well-worked yeah. move, but uh, well, you well wouldn't worked. be happy with the defending. Well worked from Sheffield United point of view. McBurney loses Tony Cliff. That's the first mistake. Good movement, good header, but from a defensive point of view, he loses them. But then if you just have a look at Young there on the, on the near post, I get. I used to be in that position myself. I get that once the ball goes over your head, if, then it's your job to get on the post. But the ball doesn't. If he goes to attack the ball yeah. to his right-hand side instead of running, going onto the post to his left-hand side, I think he actually goes to clear that, which is what he should be doing anyway. See it better from that angle. He goes into the uh, onto that near post instead of going yeah. to his right and attacking the ball. So yeah. it was a terrible start for them. Yeah, the, the worst possible start. Um, Jefferson's been a, a threat. Um, Canadian-born uh, youngster. Um, looks like he's got a lot of talent. Um, yeah, really impressed with the boy. I haven't seen him before, but he works on the shoulders. Clearly got a lot of pace and power. Um, good understanding of the game, make, makes intelligent runs, and I think he fancies his chances against the. The guys he's up against now, he's, he's quite prepared just to stop start them and then use his power and pace to try and get past. That's actually a very good save from yeah. the game. Yeah, he scored, scored in the, the last Premier round. League, he's only 19 years yeah, old. Yeah, 19. He scored yeah. in the Premier League for these. So yeah. um, he's looked really well. I think he's, he's, that's been the main threat from him is that he's running in behind. Um, and he's, he's, he's looked a real threat for, uh, for Sheffield United. He wasn't the Canadian-born star we expected to feature most on this, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, this thing today. Yeah. But um, Paul Mullins a handful, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's constantly moving. I think yeah. that's, that's the key to, to the success that he has. I mean, this is the penalty claim. I, I'm, not for me, if I'm honest. Yeah. Uh, I think if, if he was a little bit more cynical, maybe, and, and engage the contact, I think he just gets out the yeah. way there. I think if he did... Barge into the goalkeeper. Goal, yeah. I think he would have had a better chance of getting it actually. So, yeah. but he's constantly getting on the ball. He's he's quite prepared to shoot on sight. Typical striker like Alan. <laughs> <laughs> shoot on sight. He's been their main threat, hasn't he? He's oh yeah, without a shadow of doubt. Uh, that, that's Absolutely, been their threat. He's been running in behind. He's got no option here at all but to shoot. So he does the uh, he does the right thing because there's no one in the middle. He's just hoping to try and get a little bit. Uh, and then the last few minutes of yeah. the, uh, the half here. Crowd just outside, wasn't it? Penalty, but the referee got that one right. Yeah, it is a foul, but it's just outside. But but he's 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 been the main threat for them yeah. without a doubt. I suppose the other the other big threat. I mean, we did mention it before. Was is is Toza's long long <laughs> throw? I mean, it's 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 it's, <laughs> it's yeah. It's quite the Rory de la Pesca, isn't it's, it? It yeah, is. Yeah. This is the one, isn't it? Yeah, O'Connor just gets at the near post there. All in the challenge on the goalkeeper and it falls for O'Connor, but he just doesn't really yeah. get himself to be able to wrap himself around it. 
yeah. over the uh, over the bar. But yeah. that is a, what what a weapon that is that long throw. Well, it is. It is a, it's a danger. And if they can stay in the game and they can get something out, you know, if you could get one back. Yeah. I think that's the key, yeah? Yeah. and I think they've done really well. It's what they did against Arsenal those years ago. Yeah, a long time ago, yeah. And I, and I think, I just get a sense they, they still feel yeah. there's something yeah. in the game for them, and, and if they keep that mentality, yeah. then then things can happen for them. And, and they'll be now attacking, obviously, the end where are actually your fans, rather than empty end, which um, I think yeah, probably so psychologically makes a difference. Absolutely, yeah. They're still um, in the game, definitely. But Sheffield United is a good outfit, aren't they? You can yeah, see we've got them, them well organised. He's been impressed with them, despite the changes that he's, uh, that he's made. The players that have come in have looked comfortable, and... They've been the better side. That doesn't mean to say that Wrexham haven't been a threat. They have, but I think yeah. uh, Paul Hagen will be will be happy with their yeah. performance up yeah. to now. Yeah, they're, they're right in it, and I think after five minutes they'd have probably taken this. Yeah, great response. You have to give them great credit because it could have gone terribly wrong at yeah. that point. Okay, uh, we can show you the rest of today's FA Cup action now, starting with Brighton against Liverpool. Duck gets in ahead of Mo Salah, but having been committed, needs to chase back now. Liverpool threatening. Salah with Elliott in a great position, and he finds the back of the net. Harvey Elliott for Liverpool. Look at Elliott making the run through the middle. He's onside as it's played forward. Liverpool have the lead at the Amex. Brighton were arguing about what they felt was a handball there much earlier in the move. McAllister. Away by Alexander-Arnold, here's Lapti, and the deflection carries it home! Brighton are level! I'm sure it's Lewis Dunk, who had the final touch on the way in. Brighton and Herb Albion won, Liverpool won. Sully March making a run into the heart of the box, it's into March! Brighton close to a second, Allison making the block and the deflection coming off the Brighton player wide of the post. Brighton in a good spot here to try and create something. There's Stupinian, just hangs in the air, Mitoma tees it up and finds the back of the net! time it is being checked for offside it's tight by the narrowest of margins it's a goal it's a goal worthy of winning any match goodness me Liverpool will be glad to see the back of Brighton two miserable trips to the south coast in the space of a couple of weeks Bends one in again, and it's dropping invitingly, and Stokes did he take the lead? Two minutes on the clock. Salinas' corner wasn't dealt with, and Brown gobbles up the opportunity at the back post. <laughs> Stephen, he's might be in. They've hung on in there throughout the contest and suddenly they have struck with 20 minutes to go. Wow. It's a great effort, it's a magnificent goal! Josh Lauren, that is top draw quality. Nice from Tyler. Very nice from Tyler. Good ball two for Brown. Oh, Tomkinson's tackle has been seen to be a foul. I thought he got the ball. Well, it's a big call, this, from David Webb. Does Tomkinson get the ball? He does. So it's Lewis Baker on as a second-half sub from the spot to drive it home. An emphatic finish from the Stoke City captain, and that just might be that for Steven Itch in the FA Cup this season. Yeah, some, some decent goals in there, weren't they? Pretty, I mean, Matoma as well, that last-minute win in Brighton are impressive, aren't they? So impressive, yeah. Playing some great football. Never panic, always got a plan. Um, 
for whoever's, whoever's leaving, um, whether that's manager or players. Uh, what a finish. What a performance again, yeah. and what a job. Brilliant bit of feint. This feint here is brilliant, Mark. Oh, it's, 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 it's oh. an absolutely outstanding goal. You, you, at first, we didn't really appreciate the quality of that, but yeah. seeing it on replay, brilliant goal. Yeah. OK, uh, well, uh, if you've missed any of the weekend's FA Cup action, you can watch every goal on the BBC Sport website and app. The draw for the fifth round will be on the One Show tomorrow from 7 o'clock. The Football News Show will have the latest on transfer deadline day. That's on Tuesday from 10pm on the iPlayer. Next weekend sees the start of the Six Nations. Wales against Ireland is on BBC One from 1.15 on Saturday. Three tons of gold bullets. So, for instance, you can shift it. You can handle a job like this, and out of earlier, you only hear about the people who get caught. We're looking for six robbers and three tons of gold. Ready? Every ring, every watch, if you're looking for the gold, it's all around you. Now on, we're chasing the interesting one. The gold, coming soon to BBC One and iPlayer. The documentary Welcome to Wrexham, you will be familiar with Wayne Jones, landlord of the Turf Hotel, which is next to the race course ground and uh, where the football club was formed in 1864. He's joined Kelly Summers for a half time chat. Yes, Gary, if you do come to Wrexham on a match day, popping in for a pint or a lemonade if you're on dry January like me and many others, it is an absolute essential. So I feel pretty privileged that Wayne has given us some of his time on what I imagine has been an incredibly busy day for you, Wayne. It has, absolutely, yes. But every match day is a busy day now. So, uh, you know, we sell out every game. So, um, yeah, pub's still crazy busy now. There's hundreds in there even when the game's on. So, uh, yeah, very busy day. Yeah, you said there's a few hundred in there watching the game on big screens. You Absolutely. were, of course, a star. Look, we can see it in there. Look at that. Look how busy it is. We're just showing you yeah, that right, it is yeah. very busy. Don't worry, it's still working, even though you're down here working <laughs> with me pitch side. Tell us just how much life has changed in the last couple of years since the takeover and since of course the documentary yeah i mean absolutely i mean it's night and day from where we were sort of two three years ago it's always been a spectacular club it's always been a well supported club and a well-run club but uh, the last 18 months to two years has been uh, absolutely spectacular um, what rob and ryan have done for the area and for the town and the people um, Nobody could have imagined it, you know. We, we've hit the jackpot and they, they're such lovely guys and hopefully they're here for the long term. You said there they're such lovely guys. I asked you what your relationship was like with them. You've actually shared drinks with them and you're in constant communication. Yeah, fortunate enough to uh, speak to Rob and Ryan. They've been very nice to me and my family and, and lots of other people in the town uh, they've supported. So, yeah, we've had a, we've had a few aviation gins. Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think they both left the turf one night a little bit worse for wear. Um, but when they're over, if they get five minutes, they, they pop in to say hello and, 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 and whatnot. So, yeah, just just genuinely love, you know, lovely guys. We know promotion back to the EFL is ultimately what all Wrexham fans want. But of course, you'll also want a big 45 minutes here to be in the hat for the next round. Yeah, obviously. I mean, I, I thought Wrexham were very good first half. I don't think there was much in it. Obviously, a, a, a dreadful start. But, and then to lose a, a key player in Aaron Hayden was big for us. Um, but listen, I, I would love to be able to turn this round. But um, our focus, and I think everybody in the stadium will agree with me, that we need to get out of, out of this league. Um, having said that, I wouldn't be impartial to uh, two quick goals and winning this one either. Why not have both? Absolutely. League yeah. and cup. Absolutely. Wayne, thank you so much. We'll let you get back to that Pleasure. pub because those drinks aren't going to serve themselves. Yeah. And I imagine, Gary, there'll be some party in their post-match if Wrexham do turn this around. So we'll have to get our orders in early. Absolutely. Alan's still waiting for his free gin. I'm not sure he's <laughs> going to get it. Uh, the second half is coming up shortly. Here's what happened in the first 45. The set-out famous old race course ground tingling. And off we go then. Comes in towards Mbappé and Sheffield United lead after one minute and four seconds. Oh, is that a penalty? I just wonder there. The referee says no. This is a strong, determined run by Everson. But Mullen will go for goal. Carried away. Will we get a Hollywood ending? Um, it wouldn't surprise me. I, th I mean, yeah. I've... They've, they've, they've worked very hard, they've had their couple of chances. Um, yeah. Sheffield United have been the better team, I think. Yeah. And they've showed their experience and why they are where they are. Um, but if they keep on going, keep feeding off this crowd, then why not? Yeah, I think the, the next goal is key, clearly. If Wrexham get on level terms, then they can make a real 
real fight. I mean, if Sheffield United score the next one, well, it'll be really difficult for Wrexham. Okay, well, Ollie McBurney's goal there is uh, still what separates the two teams. Let's rejoin our comedy team of uh, Danny Gavidon and Jonathan Pearce. Thanks very much, Gary. I've just to tockle, totted up 978 goals scored at club and country level by our three panellists there today. That's unbelievable, isn't it? How many do you get, Dan? <laughs> Don't even put me into this conversation. <laughs> and there's a substitute coming on for uh, Sheffield United. It's Max Lowe, who had a bit of a fitness problem. Uh, he had a hamstring for the first for three, three and a half months of the season. Has started the last couple of games, but he wasn't risked from the start here today. And uh, he's come on for McAtee. Which means that I think Ben Osborne will probably push forward. Both of them can play left midfield or left back. We'll wait and see which one does get a more advanced position. And uh, out come Wrexham. No new changes for them as far as we know. Don't forget they did lose Tunnicliffe and Hayden, two of their three centre backs, in the first 10 minutes, the first haphazard 10 minutes of the game. But they did create a lot of chances after this. How do you see the second half going down? I think it, both managers will be fairly pleased with what they saw in the first half. I think it's been a very professional job from Sheffield United, getting that all important goal, of course. I think the way Wrexham responded to the setbacks in the opening 10 minutes has been very good. I think very much the same. I think Sheffield and I will have to continue what they're doing. They'll have to deal with those long throws, they'll have to deal with the set pieces. They'll be hoping to get a second goal and really kill this game off. And, Wrexham will look at him and say, look, 1-0, we're very much in this game. If we can keep getting the ball into the likes of Mullin and Wally Palmer, then maybe we can cause some problems and get back into this tie. So, still all to play for. Off we go in the second half. Wrexham in the red and white, top of the National League against Sheffield United, second in the Championship. 9,909 in the ground. The oldest football ground still being regularly used it goes back to 1807 when it was used for cricket horse racing and as the century progressed early flying displays well, both these sides high flying at the moment but it's sheffield united who've rather professionally gone about their way today yeah, i spoke to one or two of the sheffield united coaching staff before the game first thing they said to me was that there won't be any complacency from our players going into this game you know we're well aware of the confidence that Wrexham are playing with how good their home record is I certainly saw that in the first half I thought it's very good from Sheffield United one or two sloppy moments but on the whole dealt with everything that Wrexham threw at them they're going to have to continue to do that second half I'll give it to Chris Basham ironic cheers from the home supporters Elliot Lee. And then towards Callum McFanchin. He's calling for it again. Sheffield lad. Lee around the corner. The dummy there, Barley Palmer, intended for Mullin. Not yet come back to him from Palmer. Elliot Lee was wide. Cleared away by Basham at the back for. Sheffield United have released Ben Osborne into the higher position. That's low closing there on that far touch line. She might have been fouled there. The referee says go on. I know Egan was certainly appealing for it. Oh, could have been a foul as well, you know. A risky challenge by Basham. He just left the foot out dangling. James. James John Jones had gone down there, he might have got something. He does get no. there first, Basham. And Jones is slightly after, but clever play from Mullin just before that. He's not the biggest of players, but just as Basham's going ahead, that ball just leans into him, makes it difficult. And then got a goal in the, in the playoff. The qualifying round, replay win against uh, Blythe. He scored against Oldham in round one, a hat trick against Farnham. Scored at Coventry in the last round. And here's Palmer. A little nudge there. Think it given against Ackman Hodgich. 
Sucked in too tight to McFadden. Lee. McFadden. Got the cross in first time. Sheffield United getting set back in the middle again. Lee. Now to turn and bring in Young. Oh, the goalkeeper can only parry it away. And then thwarts him in the second time. There's a great block in there as well by the substitute, and eventually it's cleared away in the middle by Egan. Goodness me, Sheffield United were living dangerously. It's good patient play on this left hand side. Elliot Lee initially looking to cross, and look at the space for Young to get the strike away. He's just dipping there, moving in front of Davis, and he palms it into a bad area. And his pinball inside that 18 yard box. Long throw by Chosa. Good start of the second half by Wrexham. It's in! in level. Hooked in by Jones. Now, this is some script in the writing. First ever goal in this competition for Wrexham. Well, it's a brilliant start to the second half for Exxon. Exactly the start they would have been looking for, putting that Sheffield United team under a bit of pressure. And this is the first occasion, really, that Sheffield United not dealt with a long throw. It's that man O'Connor again in that near post, making a nuisance of himself. I think it actually drops off McBurney down to Jones there. And he does really well under pressure from, I think it might have been Jebison. Just hooks it to the right past Davis. Not the cleanest of strikes, but it does the job. Maxim right back in this tight. He does pop up with the odd goal. He scored recently against Bromley. Not many people have seen that one. This one will be seen all over the world because of the interest in that man there and how he loved it. Real honest desire and affection for the club by the American owners, and here's Mullen and Sheffield United are now rocking in the cup. Basham got there. We need to settle now the championship side. Low, looking for Jefferson, who's made that run in behind. And they had a number of long for opportunities in the first half, Rex, and Sheffield United Hall dealt with them very well. They probably didn't make enough of those situations, Wrexham, and set-piece delivery. But they do so on this occasion. It's a really smart finish. And James Jones has got a lot to do. And so often you see from those long throws, it's the second contact. It's not the first contact that hurts you. It's the second contact. And Jones just swivelling and the brilliant greatest of finishes. And he won't care. Finds that far corner. have lofty dreams here now after the years of pain. Club was an administration back in 2006, nearly went out of business. Ogle for Sheffield United. The dangerous Jebison. McBurney out wide. Ackman Hodgic. Cross was blocked. He thought it was blocked by Han. I think he hit the Wrexham defender in the in the face and out. Races Adam Davis. Norwood. Mentioning the first. Well, his role now is crucial. He's at least a minute of football since the opening day of the season. And he often calms Sheffield United down when they have periods of matches like this. Towards Palmer. O'Connor now for Repson. Lee. And then came short and spun away to try and get in behind the Hodgett. 
physically pressurise the Swedish international. Just makes life difficult, Merlin. He's never going to get that ball. It doesn't give up, makes it hard for Mihodzic. Forces a throw in a really good area again. Toza will launch it in, Mullen is in there. Jones the goal scorer as well, the referee telling Toza to come back. He's in a deeper angle on the throw. I prefer that actually. Comes the edge of the six yard area. Egan got it well, and then it's launched high and over by Elliot Lee. He's just looking to fire the ball into that kind of near post area where there's a little bit of a space. Difficult chance for Elliot Lee there, but it's only worth taking the strike on the way the ball's dropping down to him. He is in football race away, I remember seeing that Elliot Lee make his West Ham debut against Manchester United in the third round. Ten years ago now that was. That goes McBurney, Jefferson, a little bit of pressure, that's well read by Max Cloweth. Really good defending that, and the pressure from Jefferson had to get that right. Jefferson once again for Palmer. One. One. They scored extraordinarily early in the first half, in the second minute. Maxim levelling in the fifth minute of the second. Pitch is just getting a little bit slippy, there's a dampness in the air. Particularly on this near side where the grass is sparse. away for Sheffield United by Doyle. The pressure has not been relieved. Back they come, Wrexham. Paul Mullet outstanding on the night. So direct, so determined, overran it. And at the other end, Jefferson was tripped. And this will be a yellow card for the Wrexham captain, Luke Yuck. Been a really good spell, though, from the home side. Crowd right behind them now. He's almost given a free roll, Merlin. He's able to run wherever he wants to. Single foul there from Young on Jebison, just halting that attack. He's a difficult player to mark, Merlin. He really is. As I say, plays the whole width of that pitch, really. Can pop up in all kinds of areas. Pitch is a bit scrubby, but it's much better than it used to be in yesteryear. Remember coming here in 77 78 with Bristol City. 4 4 Ashton Gate and Wrexham. Thumped them 3 0 in the replay. The team of Di Davis and Alan Hill and so on. Alan Dwyer, Gareth Davis. Remember then Mickey Thomas played that day. Bobby Shinton, the big Wrexham hero, and Arpen Griffiths, I think, was the player manager. Who was that good goal scorer here? Graham Whittle in that era was a good goal scorer too. Played that day. I'm talking about good goal scorers with a pedigree. Sheffield United turned uh, to their talisman. Turns 37 next Sunday, Billy Sharp is going to come on. Ben Osborne will go off to allow Billy Sharp to come on. In his third spell, 128 goals in all. Also, in the man in the Osborne and McBurney, the two to go off. And Sharp and then Dyer, the two to come off. Well, they'll be pleased, they've got nearly an hour out of it. Yeah, got Sheffrey Knight off to a fantastic start, a near post run, bullet header. Going to be an important player. For Sheffield United between now and the end of the season, Ollie McBurney, as will this man, Billy Sharp. Three spells at the club. Only a couple of goals this season. He came on in the third round at Millwall for 20 odd minutes. Into the quarter final in 2020 when they were beaten by Arsenal. Sheffield United through and through. Sheffield Lab. 
probably knows every word of the Chip Patty song. But he sings it to the mirror in his bedroom. I know a fair few Sheffield United fans who do that, by the way. underneath it, but the pressure still around that Sheffield United defensive third. O'Connor has done so well since readjusting to a different role. After 500 career games. Lee. Wrexham look the most dangerous team now. Lee. He even got squared up against the runner. Never a good thing for a defender. McFadgett. Mullin. Seeing the Wrexham wing, that's much higher in this second half than they were in the first, and that's the way they play. Yeah, and that's because they're starting to control this game. Sheffield United, you can understand the changes from the manager, Paul Heckin Bottom, because they haven't quite come out with the same kind of energy, intensity as we saw in the first half, and just getting that feeling now. Wrexham starting to control the game a lot more. And Toza with a long throw, and the big tall defender. Cause problems again, comes back out to him. Steadied himself, it was well read, but he still gets the shot away. And it's a corner ball. He starts the move and finishes it. Ben Toza initially with a long throw. Gets the ball back, shrugs off Ollie Norwood. Let's fly with the strike. Egan does well, he's out quickly. Gets the block on. And that Newport team that drew with Spurs in 2018, beaten in the replay at this stage. The Cheltenham team that went out to Man City the following year. And it comes towards him at the near post, and they've scored again, Wrexham Lee! Again, it's a set piece, again, they fail to deliver. And O'Connor, who's been super all day, rattles in the Wrexham lead on the hour. This is incredible. What a turnaround this is from Wrexham. They've been superb this second half. They've come out the more dominant with more intensity. That early goal start of the second half, so important. Excellent delivery from Young into that near post area. I think it's clear with initially that misses the ball and just drops down into the path of O'Connor. And it's a really good strike. Just Jefferson pulling on his right arm there as well. Keeps the strike low, generates the power. Adam Davis, absolutely no chance. He kept them in the competition in the qualifying round, scoring away at Blythe in the 1-1. And he scored a goal here that puts them ahead against Premier League-bound Sheffield United. quite believe it. Uh, Mickey Thomas, hero here against the Arsenal. That game, that day in 91-92, probably saved them financially in Orexa. They've lived on the edge for so long. And is this the dawning of a new era under these American investors who say they're in here for the long term. Lee trying to scamper beyond Bogle, there's a foul. Just a little bit of afters, it's getting a bit touchy, but Hajim won't release the ball. 
It's up to Sheffield United now to react, see what they're made of. They've been the better side the second half. Max and Aveli have, in terms of their long throws, set pieces have been better, they've caused more problems. It's absolutely clear with getting across that near post, and that was the problem for Sheffield United. They didn't deal with that near post area. There's a little set to Fadzin. Bogle getting involved. Fadzin picking up the yellow card. Definitely stepping straight in there to uh, calm things down. It's been impressive. He's made big decisions and he's made them well. They are cheering everything here. Tenacious Elliot Lee charge. <laughs> Twenty six years since Rexham made the fifth round. There's some experience on that bench. Sharp with the cross, it took a slight deflection. Swing of the boot in there by Jebison. Orwell was more measured and levels it up. As calm as you like after the first one had been blocked. He's determined to make a long run in this competition to the quarter-finals at least for the fifth time it will be for him a brilliant response from Sheffield United right back in this game good center forward play initially from Billy Sharp on the right and they're never really able to clear their lines Rex a couple of opportunities to do so and the ball just dropping down to Ollie Norwood fantastic composure just to find that far corner just wrong footing the goalkeeper Howard and toes are on the line Brilliant response. Switch to his weaker foot to finish. He's had a remarkably consistent season. He's the man the manager turns to. You would have seen him the first half. There was a, a conference between the two on the in front of that dugout when things were going slightly against Sheffield United. Paul Heckingbottom turned to Ollie Norwood. He's the one that controls things. He brings calmness, he dictates the tempo. Exactly the man that you'd want the ball to drop to in that kind of situation. Have a little bit of time to think about what he wanted to do with the finish. Finds that far corner brilliantly. Proper cup tie this. And Hodgich. Coming towards some die. Fine season he's having. He's run that back fair and square. Quick feet took him away. Such a skillful player, goes up through the gears, lovely run this. Very good run, an excellent run. Very nearly a brilliant run. I don't know if he thinks it's a corner here, but... Outstanding run from Mundai. Yeah, it was a corner. It comes off, I think it's clear with, in the end, doesn't get it, but... Electric centre forward play there, picking the ball up deep. He's drifted past four or five players there. Played against England in the World Cup. The Senegal went off at uh, half time. He's the player they say at Sheffield United. He's going to be elite. He's 22. Chris Basham, it was, who made that remark about him. The man in diet. Jebison. Main front runner now for Sheffield United. Sharp playing off him and making that run to the edge of the box. Jefferson, a confident carry. And plays it away to the supporting runner. Bogle up there again. He's a willing runner, isn't he, from the back to get up there, but over it went. Yeah, he's got good athleticism, Jefferson and Bogle. Just looks like he's running into traffic there, but Paul just drops the Bogle and should have done better with the strike there. Yes, on his weaker left foot, but should be working the goalkeeper. Good direct play from the youngster Jefferson again, no.
Will it go to Bramall Lane? <laughs> Very old historic stadium. They claim that's the oldest stadium in the world still hosting professional football matches and has continually hosted football matches. Football didn't come here until 1864. Sense there'll be plenty of twists and turns before that. You just had that feeling, Jonathan, at 1 0. You just felt Sheffield United would need a second to really kind of kill this game off. They had their moments, one or two moments, makes them in the first half. Brilliant second half performance up until now. Three substitutes warming up. What's a word here with the coaching staff? That's, that's the fourth official there. Saying there, red card to someone, and a yellow to someone else, I think. Very crude lip reading. I think it's Jefferson. No. Jefferson. Jefferson's been called towards him. He could be in trouble here. He's off. Daniel Jefferson is sent off, off the ball. I'm hearing there was retaliation off the ball. And the game shifts again. He's had a bright game, the 19-year-old. But he has besmirched the afternoon. If that is correct, if he has retaliated. Paul Heckingbottom clearly looks confounded. He's On the halfway line yeah. there, he's turned round, cuffed and kicked out at Bentoza. Let's have a look at it again. Toza initiates the contact. He's appealing to the assistant referee for what had happened. I think that's just after the initial yeah, contact. That, that's the aftermath. It's what happens before that. And I think there is a little swipe out by Jebison with his right foot, but they both look like they're at it there. I'm not sure if that's a red card. Toza was yellow carded. Well, in a full blooded. Cup tie at 2 2. Should that have been a red card? It just looked like Ben Toes was initially worried about Jefferson maybe running in behind. So it looked like he initially maybe grabbed the arm. And then I think the frustration comes from Jefferson and he just kind of swings out with that right boot. Suspension now will come the way of Jefferson. Yeah, disappointing for the youngster. He's been a threat in the game. He's shown some real flashes of quality. Just a little bit of naivety of youth there, maybe. Gets involved in something, shows a bit of frustration, lashes out. Toza will take the throw. Into the near post. It's a good claim. Under pressure. Adam Davis. Excellent goalkeeping, Adam Davis coming into a crowd of body, bodies there and Anthony needs to be safe. 
perhaps if we look at that incident again. Yeah, again, that's the aftermath of it. It's what kind of what happens before that. It's definitely not getting a red card for that. It's the incident just before. Maybe ben Tozer there just using his all his experience on the youngster there. Good ball in behind. Here's McFadden. Substitutions up and coming. And he got through there, Palmer. Don't forget. You can watch every FA Cup goal on the BBC Sport website and app. And a reminder that the draw for the fifth round will take place on the one show tomorrow evening. And that is from 7 o'clock. Wrexham. <laughs> will take off McFadgen, who's on a yellow card, and replace him with an attacker in Sam Dorby. He scored against Oldham and Coventry earlier on in the competition. Yeah, really positive move this, I think, from Phil Parkinson. Up against ten. Yeah, up against ten men. Really good opportunity for him to go on and win this tie. He knows this goes to replay, the game will be very different. Bramall Lane, so looking to really capitalise on this opportunity. Looks like maybe Wrexham might have gone to a, a back four now. Fifteen minutes to go. Who wants the ball turned that wide? This is in doubt. It's a clever player. From France, he was signed from Boreham Wood in non league football. He was spending French senior football at Marseille, which is the youth team. It's well claimed by Eagle. This looks like maybe Elliot Lee's going to be that man that maybe plays a little bit more out on his left hand side. It's a little bit more like a front three for Rexon now, with Dolby coming on. And Palmer through the middle. And then just drifting out to that right hand side. Palmer. And then it goes out to Tom O'Connor. Quickly worked away. Good draw by Jones who had to come on early in the in the match and did well and Mullin it was actually played the ball out wide as at a super game. It's a testing cross. Egan turned to his goalkeeper and says, Where were you? There was no court. Put it away by Doyle. Connor's pass. Mullin keeps it in. Cross all the way through. Good pressure over there. Anthony Ford's had a good game. No was equal to it for the physicality. Mullin has been everywhere. Did well Ford on that far side. So he's not high up the pitch. That overhit cross is easily collected by Max Lowe and he's clearing up the field but just keeps the pressure on. Forces another long throw. Toza will take it. That's dangerous again. Ahead of my O'Connor, who scored their second over. And there's a lot of those first contacts. Thomas O'Connor. So again here, but just difficult to kind of generate the, the power on the header under pressure. I'll be pleased. 
proud of his players, really, because of the way they came back from that early adversity. Such an adventurous Wrexham team out there now. Here's Palmer, couldn't get beyond. And Jai, calmly done. Ackman Hodgic loves to come forward like this. Vogel, it's an adventurous evening. Oh, with a steady eddy. Tommy Doyle. It'll be a Sheffield United throw. As we rapidly approach the last ten minutes. Well, Court O'Connor. Gets up well, doesn't he? If you look at him, he's... He's not the broadest, he's not the tallest, he's 5 foot 11. He climbs well in the opposition box, scored a headed goal against Coventry. He's there again today to make it 2 1. Here's Bogle. Come to your candidates, Danny. In about five minutes' time, you've got to name your Emirates player of the match. There are lots of candidates out there. Yeah, there certainly is. On both sides. Colin McBurney was very good in that first half for Sheffield United leading the line. Some excellent, excellent performances. I'm not saying I'm cheap or grasping or anything, <laughs> but if you give it to Ryan Reynolds as player of the match, we could get a role, you know, in the bush. <laughs> Follow Jin. Didn't hesitate after the handball shot and he rattled the woodwork. And Jai has lost possession. Calmly done by Jokes. Such an eventful tie. Palmer's deep cross and out comes Adam Davis, who's had a strong game here. The Welsh World Cup squad man. Big chance for Oli Palmer. Good set up play from Wrexham on his left hand side. Did look like a handball initially. Drops down to Oli Palmer and catches the strike really clean. So so unlucky. Rattles off the crossbar. Definitely hits the hand of Hamid Hodzic. Just drops down to Oli Palmer. Here. He's bouncing. Catches the strike ever so well. He'll feel that he scored. Once that's left the boot. So so unlucky. Hand was low down by the side, wasn't it, though? There's a little bit of distance there as well as that cross comes in. It wasn't like he was standing right next to the... Was there a little Hodzic. bit of movement as well? Oh. The, the hand? I think he has time to get the hand out of the way. We need to see that one again, but... Anyway, the man only Palmer didn't hesitate, did he? He wasn't waiting around. Eight minutes to go, a little bit more. Jones, Palmer drops deep. Brought him to do just this, to stretch defences, create opportunities for the goal snaffler, Paul Mullen. Tozer. Is there a winner in this yet for Wrexham? Only in the 17th home game on the bounce. Extraordinary record. And his cross was blocked in the way. Yeah. It's a winner in this for Sheffield United as well. Yes, down to ten men, but still have the quality to hurt the opposition. I'm sure Paul Eckenbottom will want a replay of what they're trying to do in terms of getting promotion back to the Premier League. So still capable of winning this time with ten men, the quality that they have. 34 years since they've beaten Sheffield United on this ground. Toza with the long throw. Didn't come through to Davis that time. Sheffield United ease it away. Just 
Jones joined us. Sheffield United led after 64 seconds. James Jones leveled four minutes into the second half. O'Connor took uh, Wrexham ahead. And Ollie Norwood almost immediately equalised. Sheffield United had Jefferson sent off and they're under the cosh here now. Mullin right to the cross court. If he was looking for Palmer, he was asking for a lot, to be fair, I think. I think it was Dolby, who just drags that across the six-yard box, and it's Mullin, on that far post, desperately trying to get it, but you see Mullin's run, he's so deep, not able to make up the ground. Almost Dolby's cross, not Mullin. Bogle. That's a dangerous ball in looking for Billy Sharp. Angled in. All the way to Norwood. Sharp. To be dealt with. By Mark Howard. Too much time on it. That's not the first time that's happened in the game. Swedish and Bosnian international, isn't he? Edmund Hodzic, born in Malmo, only come from Bosnia Herzegovina. His defence is now under pressure. It's a three on three. And Mullin looks for Dolby. And back to Mullin. Can he win it here? He's their top scorer, and he's now scored in every round of the competition. From the qualifying round through to round four, and the first non-league player to do that since 1984-85. He's wearing customised boots today, his little lad has him well. And all of a sudden, Paul Heckenbottom's side are behind again. And surely there's not enough time for them to come back, or is there, in this remarkable tie? Well, if there's anybody that has deserved a goal for their performance, it's him. It's this man. Paul Merlin starts the move here, and he finishes it, and possibly finishes Sheffield United's participation in this competition. Plays that pass wide, continues to run into the box. Looks like he's not going to get the shot away here. Great play by Dolby to pick him out. Touches under his feet. Ahmed oh, Odzic desperately trying to get across, and I think the shot you see here actually goes through his legs and past Davis into the back of the net. Brilliant composure, brilliant finish in a pressure situation. And as he put Wrexham through to the next round, that man can't believe it, Ryan Reynolds. His team has been. Fantastic the second half. In 78 games in all competitions for Wrexham, he scored 60 goals. Incredible. He's scored in five in a row now. Now Sheffield United have made a change. Ismail Koulibaly has come on to replace Norwood, the uh, Mali under-20 international. And his debut for the club as a sub against Millwall in the last round. He's been there for, what, two and a half years now. He went out on loan to Berschgott in Belgian football for a couple of years. Possibly more of an attacking midfielder. Well, they need something here, Sheffield United, to stay in the competition. Yeah, they certainly do. It's a brilliant counter-attack from Exxon. We talk about the Mullin finish, but... It's just his awareness to find kind of pockets of space and not just running in behind, but he drops deep and he picks the ball up in a pocket of space. He gets turned and starts to counter-attack off and then finishes it with a really smart finish. 
and a brilliant all-round performance from him. It was Ahmed Hodzic who went off for uh, Sheffield United. Still will play an important role out there. seconds to go. There is Norwood. It comes to nothing. They're nearly there. Mark Howard taking his time. Man who nearly got all the way to the final with Sheffield United all those years ago. Seeded five on that semi final day against Hull. Forward by Jones. There's a mistake, and Dolby could be in here. This would have been the icing on the cake for Exxon. Dolby just holding off. Basham really struggling to get back and he's just panics with a finish in the end, possibly rolls his ankle as well. Who's your player of the match? Well, there can be only one at man near Paul Munning. I think this performance has epitomised everything good about Exxon this afternoon and deserved that goal at the end, the winning goal as well. Sensational all-round centre forwards performance from him. Young, the big heave ho from the captain. It is a sensational home record, isn't it? Not since Grimsby won here in the playoff semi-final second leg to get out of the National League have they lost a home game. Or even been held here. And Sheffield United look a little bit frustrated now. And just lost their way in the second half. And we have Sheffield United not come out with the same intensity, desire, professionalism. Maxim have taken full advantage of it. Frustrated challenge, needless really, because Elliot Lee, with all due respect, is not a sprinter. He's played a very clever role today. He's had a good season. Why don't they all? I'd be really pleased, Ryan Reynolds. This will be really good for that second leg of the documentary. Can they hold on? Kula Valley. And Tommy Doyle. To Bogle. Challenged by Lee. Call for more from the supporters. And one of them has just chucked the ball away, which is totally needless. He must have crept in in the second half. The attendance has gone up to 9,949. Bogle. And Jai. And they create one more chance. Still enough minutes on the clock. So draw level and even go on and win it. Such is the fickle nature of the FA Cup. This wonderful, enchanting and heartbreaking competition. Kulibaly and Bogle. He's allowed to go a long, long way and he can score goals. And that's an intelligent ball away. As it raced up from the control of Kulibaly. It's a decent ball in! 
and the header just wide. A lovely ball in. And good delivery from Doyle from our hand side. Jai on that near post. He's looking to glance it towards the far post there, not quite getting the direction on the header. Half a chance for him. Of, uh... <laughs> oh, shucks. Sharp. And the old war horse. Engender something of a comeback. He wants a free kick. The corner is given. Mm, looked like a free kick as well. Just sold himself, O'Connor. Mm, looked like he won the ball. Minesman, in close attendance there, not agreeing. They have the potency to still save this cup time. They have the centre backs and the passion is in there. Egan is up there on the edge of the penalty area. All the way through. They've leveled. Astonishing. It is John Egan. Deep into stoppage time. Wrexham three, Sheffield United three. And now he looks a little less happy. John Egan, so often such a rock at the back for Sheffield United. Comes forward to get his first ever FA Cup goal. And they just don't deal with the ball on that far post. I think it's Anthony Ford who almost loses his bearings of where the ball is, where Egan is. It's a really good finish for me, he's got a lot to do there, unsighted and it's just bouncing in front of him. Just hits the shin, controls the finish ever so well. He can't believe it, Phil Parkinson, another twist in the tail. What he doesn't want is a replay. I think they've got eight games in February, six of them are at home. Big games as well. Woking in there, I think Woking are top three or four. In the National League. What might yet happen? Bogle picks himself up. A murky old evening here under the, the old floodlights. We'll all peer through the gloom and see the ball and get it away from Toza's long throw. It's a good clearance away. Twelve was underneath it. Tozer again. Launched in towards the near post. Gets it back, drove it into the mix. Ford now for Wrexham. Not a big heave oh, an intelligent ball in, looking for Palmer. He's there again, Anthony Ford. They're not panicking, they're not rushing to force a winner, they're trying to play football. Toza's gone across there, but it's taken short. Ford. There's the big cross in. And away it goes by Basham. This will be the last attack of the game. They won't have time, a sensational game. Bill Parkinson's side 1-0 down in the opening two minutes and they lost two key defenders as well. Got back into the game, took the lead through O'Connor, only for Norwood to level, went back ahead again through the man of the match, Mullin, only for John Egan to force a replay in stoppage time. Sensational cup tie, old-fashioned cup tie, thoroughly enjoyable, and it finishes Wrexham 3, Sheffield United 3. Well, what about that? If they'd written that for a Hollywood script, you wouldn't believe it. Um, goal after goal, particularly in the second half, fabulous effort from non-league uh, Wrexham.
and uh, Sheffield United as well deserve a lot of credit for the way they stuck at it and came back a couple of times from behind in that second half. Well, what a game we've seen, oh, Alan. Absolutely incredible. Um, credit to both sides for the, the way they went at each other, particularly in that second half, in a great atmosphere. I mean, we. <laughs> We said to the co-owner before the game, didn't we, the living, breathing, screaming nightmare. He's had it all in that, uh, yeah. in that second half, and that's what it's all about, yeah. isn't it? It was an incredible game. Well, your hometown club, they did, they did fabulously well. It's heartbreaking for them in some ways. They've got another go at it, of course, in a yeah. replay, but... Yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic effort from, from everybody involved. I mean, the, the players, second half, I thought they were absolutely brilliant, so yeah. and credit to them. Sheffield United, difficult circumstances for them, but they stuck out it and got a little bit of the reward, maybe undeserved towards the end, maybe, given how well Wrexham had played, but maybe I'm a little bit biased in saying <laughs> that. Well, I think normally, it's, it's normal in, in, in FA Cup games when you get non-league teams, and teams from the lower league, that we're all a little bit, everyone wants a shot, except, of course, unless it's your team correct, playing against correct. them. So that's perfectly allowed, Mark, we <laughs> add that. But, I mean, it was, a, it was a fabulous, fabulous effort. Well, it had everything, Gary, even from the first minute with, with Sheffield United scoring, two centre-halves going off, going off injured. Um, and then, then all of those, all of those things. We said the, uh, we said the second half yeah. that um, that they needed to show a little bit more, and they, they certainly did that. Uh, what an effort! What a performance! Great to be here in, in such a special atmosphere. Yeah. We can hear from uh, Paul Mullin. He thought he scored the uh, winner, of course, um, but sadly that wasn't to be the case. But he's still got lots to be proud of. Here he is with Kelly Summers. Paul, we can see from your face you've got a smile on it now, but you look so disappointed. The most heartbreaking events. What are your emotions right now? Yeah, that's just me mate singing for me, so uh, made me smile. But no, disappointed, very disappointed. Last, basically one of the last kicks of the game to concede from a set play. It's just gutting them really when we put us such hard work into the game and you know got the goal late on and you think that we could just hold on against the ten men there, then we could get through. But it wasn't to be. Did you feel overall you deserved to win it? Sorry? Did you feel that overall, with your performance, you deserved to win today? Yeah, I thought we were the better team for, throughout the game, um, creating chances, looking dangerous on the break, limited them really in open play to not many chances at all, and as I say, to concede from two set pieces in the game is really disappointing for us. For you personally, you are player of the match, you're holding the award there. Another goal for you as well, you just love scoring in this competition. Tell us the feeling when the ball hit the back of the net, and also a little bit about your celebration. Yeah, well, it's been uh, not a tough couple of weeks because, you know, it doesn't affect me too much because he's just a happy lad, but it's coming into the game today, I really wanted to score. I got boots made for in the, um, in the week leading up to it and I managed to score one and I thought it would be the winner, but sadly it wasn't. Of course, though, you do still take the side second in the championship to a replay. The atmosphere in here tonight has been electric. You must be so proud of everyone to do with Wrexham today. Yeah, I'm so proud of everyone. You know, we've worked really hard to get this far in the competition, but as I said during the week coming into the game, we came here today expect not expecting to win but thinking we could win the game we had a game plan and we worked to it and i think everyone watching on today we deserve to win the game and it's just disappointing to come away with the draw that you know they're a really top side and looks like they're going to go to the premiership so uh, as i say when the dust settles a bit tomorrow i think we'll look and be proud of today but uh, you know we'll go to a replay now and try and do it again thanks for your time well done as well tonight thanks very much cheers Paul Mullin, he looked like he'd won it. He looked obviously distraught the fact that they equalised. It would have been so hard for him. Let's have a look at, um, at the goal that put them three two ahead from, from Paul Mullin. He scored, that was his 28th goal of the season, Alan. It's 68, end of January. Seven games, and unbelievable. And if there was one guy who deserved the goal today, it was him for his performance. Non-stop running, non-stop commitment. He was always a threat. We saw in the first half, he's looking to shoot from, uh, from everywhere, and he deserved it. Got on the end of that, through the keeper's legs, a little bit of luck, so what, it doesn't matter. He, des he deserved that, he did. Good finish. Oh, there you go, through his legs. Yeah, yeah, it was. Oh, there's, a, the, well, there's a bit of a reaction there. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous scenes here at the end of the um, ground, um, but it was a bit more heartbreaking, of course, uh, in the last couple of minutes with that equaliser from uh, Egan. Let's see that. Yeah, they were, they were, I mean, they put them under pressure this time. They're down, to, uh, they're down to 10 men, so you've got to give them great credit for the way they've not given up. They kept on going, but from a Wrexham point of view, very similar 
to the first one that conceded. They could have and probably should have done better. But Egan's there, they've pushed men forward. They're risking everything, they've got to, they've got no choice but to go for it. And Egan's on the end of that. You've got to give them credit as well, you know. Oh, they were, that's it. They, I mean, You've twice they went credit. behind, yeah. twice they came back. I mean, they, they were able to handle the atmosphere that was incredible in here today. Yeah. You can imagine if you sat watching at home that they've had someone sent off and then, of course, Wrexham go and score. So they're up against it, but the way they battled and the way they kept on going, yeah. I think he'd have learned a little bit about football <laughs> <laughs> today, Mark. I think he's learning every game he's getting involved in. You can see the emotional effort that he, he has to go through like, like us all today, yeah. in fairness. It was a fantastic cup tie, yeah. I have yeah, to say. Apparently he's going to the dressing rooms and uh, probably yeah. to, to yeah. congratulate yeah. his players Absolutely. on a, a, to a terrific yeah. performance. Um, Seems like a while ago. Even I mean, we won't go right to the first half. We'll show you the second half goals. Um, the equaliser. They came out so strongly, didn't they? Wrecked them in the second. Half. Well, we said about this weapon that they uh, that they have in the long throw from Tozer, and it worked so well today. And it works well in every game. And if you've got someone who can do that, it it, it, it is great for you. It is unbelievable. Again, yeah. And he gets on the uh, he gets on the end of it. Get a little bit of ricochet, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. It ends up in the back of the it net. Took a lot of throwing to that yeah. second half. Well, the thing with it, when you've got a weapon like that, everybody reacts to it because they know the the quality that's going to come in. So the Wrexham players are always constantly on the move because they expect things to drop and things to happen for them, and that's why they score yeah. so many goals from it. Yeah, that's right. And and it wasn't too long after that that they went two one ahead. Yeah, O'Connor gets the uh, gets yeah. the goal, doesn't it? He, yeah. he was he went a bit close in that in that first half where he yeah. couldn't quite quite get his it wrap his body around it. But this time very very different. Set piece corner again. There you go. Thanks very much. Right place, right time. And they were looking dangerous. And you can imagine they're feeding off the atmosphere yeah. at this point. I mean, it hits Billy Sharp, I think it is, isn't it? it? Hits his arms there, yeah. and it falls very kindly for Tom O'Connor. Sticks it away really well. Could very easily have been a penalty from the handball, but yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't stand on on ceremony when the balls drop in like right. that in the box. <laughs> great scenes, great scenes. Yeah. But Sheffield United came back. Norwood's equaliser, two-two. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a reason. To remember the scoring <laughs> yeah. order. There's a reason that they're, they're at the top of the championship because they've got character, they've got yeah. resilience, um, and they don't want to be beaten. Um, and that's credit to them. They kept going. This is actually a great finish from yeah. Norwood comes back to him then he has to react to it yeah. and just showed his quality when it, when he needed it. Yeah, Toza blocks it there I think it is isn't it so yeah, yeah. but he sticks it away really well controlled there. Yeah. It's not that easy. Left foot yeah. and sticks yeah. it away in the corner yeah good finish. A couple of decisions uh, to talk about the Jefferson red card it was quite hard to get um, like exact images of, of, yeah. of what happened. Mm. Uh, this is the best we can do. I, I, I saw something going on, I just wasn't yeah. sure what, and I'm, I, I was aware that they're trying to put the ball through and there was a clash, but actually I think it happens just before that one there, and if you have a look at that, it, I mean it's still not a great view that we've got of it. The assistant there who's right in front of it, who then informs the referee, must a have a better of, view. It looks a bit six to one and a half. It doesn't look a lot really, from, from that angle, yeah. No, no, yeah. it was the interpretation of the fourth official, he's yeah. got a little bit busy in there and... Uh, Wanted to make a name for himself. No. Yeah. Do you think Wrexham should have had a penalty? Looks yes. it to us. Definitely. Yeah. I think they definitely should have a penalty, yeah. Yeah, it was a handball, yeah. clearly. I mean, he's yeah. travelled, the ball's travelled, I don't know, 12, 15 yards. Yeah. Um, so there's, the, you, you can't complain that it's close up. No there. VAR, of course, no which VAR, I, I, I think they. Well, yeah, but there's the argument, isn't there? You've got VAR yeah. in some yeah. FA Cup games and, and some yeah. in, not in, in others because of this ground here and, and lower league grounds then it's 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 not equipped for that i don't think that's fair i think if you're going to have it you should have it for everyone but yeah. i know it's difficult well we, we we talked to ryan reynolds before the game and um, it shows you how big a superstar are you when you do actually a piece of analysis on someone that owns the football club <laughs> and their reactions throughout but um <laughs> if you're going to travel in from new york for five or six hours you want to be entertained <laughs> <laughs> they most certainly yeah. were entertained and we were uh, yeah. at all in the ground and hopefully you at home as well. I'm sure you thoroughly enjoyed it, but that's what football does to you, isn't it? We've learned that yeah, over the years, haven't we? Don't we know? That's why we all got grey hair. <laughs> and some hair. <laughs> <laughs> what a day. Yeah. yeah what a match. It was just incredible. Yeah. Had yeah. absolutely everything. Yeah. From the first minute, the goals, yeah. the injuries, the red cards. Yeah. Just it was it was just great to yeah. be here in this superb yeah. atmosphere. Yep. Yeah. Glad you came. 
Absolutely, yeah. Don't get back often enough. I'm a bit busy on, on weekends these yeah, days. Well, but, uh, yeah. Great to be here. Didn't today. even have a chance to talk about Bradford. It was, it was, no, it was such, no, a, no. such well, a... Well, hopefully, hopefully we don't play them next year because we, we'll go up and, <laughs> and they'll go up as well. Yeah. Well, it's been, it's been great to see you. Always is, Mark. Um, thanks Pleasure. very much yeah, uh, for joining it. us. And um, Alan, that was fun. It really was. Uh, so, Ryan, superheroes give us a thriller. And now there's a sequel. Just marvel at that. Thank you and goodbye. Less than a mile from the centre of town A famous old stadium's crumbling down No one's invested so much as a penny Bring on the dead food A rough pack of any The set out famous old race course ground tingling Comes in towards Mbappé and Sheffield United lead After one minute and four seconds Good start of the second half by Wrexham It's in! Now this is some script in the writing. And it comes towards him with a near pass and they've scored again, Wrexham Lee. Only with more measured and levels it up. Daniel Jefferson is sent off the ball. Back to Mullen, can he win it here? Yes he can! They've leveled! Sensational cup tie, old-fashioned cup tie.